Hello guys. <clears throat> Can you hear me? Sound check, sound check. Hey, hello, hello. Awesome. Sounds good. <clears throat> How's it going everyone? Sorry, I got a little slight delay here on starting the stream. Uh, <clears throat> got a lot of stuff going on. Loud and clear. <clears throat> um, hey, Mr. Laco. Next batch nine. Yeah, we're working on it, guys. As you know, we have uh, the three coming big steps or quite major content in um, various ways. Not only game content, but also server network wise <clears throat> i'm here now Eric. awesome awesome so uh <clears throat> we need a little bit more time we're refining effects when it comes to elementalism uh so but i do hope that i'm able to do a sneak peek when i'm running around on test and actually um showcasing um elementalism <clears throat> we should have more final effect states uh so that's our plan currently so next week stream should uh be a sneak peek of elementalism <clears throat> month almost over with no patch indeed indeed we we don't have any public dates as you know it's the important part is to make sure that we Deliver when we are ready and have it under control. Can you shave your beard? I'm not sure about it. I uh, done it in the past and I look like a teenager. <laughs> so I got used to the beard now. So we will see, we will see. Um... <clears throat> So let's see. But what, what I did manage to grab in the last minute uh, when it comes to sneak peek is actually our um, Scorpion Ballista. And uh, I have to say uh, it looks pretty awesome and I've never seen anything su with such complexity and realism badass looking in any any MMO or almost any game period when it comes to siege machineries. <clears throat> so um, I, uh, I'm going to show you that in motion a little bit. It's still on a progress um, when it comes to fine-tuning its mechanics, but uh, we have a pretty good draft. Uh, and yeah, so we actually have uh, our one-year anniversary, which is quite insane. I, I can't even, you know grasp how one year have passed since the <clears throat> steam release madness chaos mayhem it feels like it was just around the corner and we just you know been working very hard on uh, all those core components that are necessary to fully support large-scale battles sieges you know obviously the, the patch is coming now very soon um and of course in general capacity stability on servers to make sure that we are get it, getting uh, in place for the I would say both TC and Epic Games step or two two very large milestones and it's also obviously gonna bring um, more players without a doubt current topic is wrong what is the current topic uh, oops did I click How, how is it wrong? I don't get it. <clears throat> happy one year anniversary of more, more than two early access, everyone. Happy one, happy, happy one year anniversary. <laughs> more. Uh, current topic is wrong. What's what's wrong? Uh, ah, shit. Sorry. I thought you meant the stream topic. Yeah, you're right. I'm fixing it now. Sorry about that. Uh, okay. 
I understand now. Sorry. <laughs> a little uh, slow today. A little exhausted in my brain. I think Lord Henrik likes to do Q&As. I mean, uh, I do enjoy j hanging out with you guys. I, I'm very happy with the community we have. and We have a lot of, a lot of good debates, questions, discussions. Uh, I do enjoy having that break from uh, the normal working day and just relax a little bit and hang out with you guys. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, I mean, obviously, we all uh, have different energy p levels, right? Depending on topics and questions as well, obviously. Yeah, sorry, sorry about... Uh, I, I see what I mean now with the current topic in the actual... Uh, Above my head, I uh, thought it was about the stream information topic, so my bad. Uh, <sighs> Might we get any TC tool before TC content release? What do I mean with TC tool? So, along with the TC patch, there's a lot of things when it comes to um, starting TC and sieging. Uh, which is obviously two very large components. And along with that comes a lot of house, stronghold, keep <clears throat> functions and tools and services, obviously, along with a good pack of new structures that you can uh, construct to build your city. Let's roll our thirst of fat mage in Haven. Wish me luck. That is a uh, quite a rare breed, I think. Thirst of fat mage. <laughs> Uh, have we actually went live with our website updates? We were do we wrote a little summarize. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's on the website. That's correct. So if you haven't checked it out, you can go to the website <clears throat> in the mid section of news. There's actually a little um, summarize of what's happening this year. Uh, covering some of the focus patches and um, again went through some of those details that you know many haven't really um, noticed since release pretty much so a good summarize if you are a little bit uh, unsure of what what's going on and what happened you can always check that out on the website <clears throat> we're also sending out a newsletter for that and since it's the 25th we um, Thought it was suitable to also have a 25% off on stale Steam sales. I mean, uh, so if you uh, are one of those that are, you know, still unsure, it's a good opportunity to grab it while we have the 25% off Steam sale. <clears throat> Plans on nerfing loot fire foot fighters. Uh, <clears throat> no, not really. <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure why we, we why we would nerf foot fighters. They are quite a good start for everyone to get going and you know get anything going, and then you can refine your specific style. And uh, we have been a little bit behind when it comes to those offering this different style options for ma mages, which I think is an awesome. Um, expansion when it comes to releasing this next sprint which is obviously elementalism so that should put everything on a very wide good base option value and then of, of course we plan to uh, additionally expand on uh, melee special ability combat uh, stuff like that to add a little more depth and like we talked about the whole year the um, the footy meta when it comes to uh, a fight, there's a little bit lack of starter combats and parry breakers, you know, options like that. So we're getting some of those next. Yeah, everything is OP, right? All clades, all professions are OP and uh, that's good. That's good. It means we are in a good spot. Wait, I'm going to on sale. Yes, like I mentioned, on if you go on the website, we have a little update there. It is news. 
our anniversary update with a good summarize and uh, along with that a little steam sale <clears throat> Any sneak peek of elementalism today? No, today we're gonna uh, show you a little bit of our upcoming siege machine. And uh, I'm planning to do a sneak peek of elementalism next stream. So next week is the plan to show um, some of those mighty elementalism spells finally. It's been a long, hard work to try to refine the whole system when it comes to Casting animation, synchronizing the precast to be able to read what kind of spells. So with knowledge, you should be able to read what kind of spells you're casting. Then of course the actual sp spell casting, the effects for that, and all the mechanics. It's it's a huge school with a lot of magic. <clears throat> uh. <clears throat> Cracker, what do you mean with TC tools before TC content? I mean, the TC patch is the TC content tools focus. Again, we're getting all the necessary preparation to get a enjoyable TC uh, patch, such as AI path, pet navigation inside our roundhouses. Finally, we have made um, a progression and solved the pathing of AI inside house and around houses. As you know, when you have our pets following you. They can go quite crazy when it comes to um, walking around or staying close when you are walking around player housing. And that is how the pathing damage is um, dynamically split up when someone places a house, which uh, doesn't work very well. So we have a new system for that in place now, and now they can smoothly follow you around, including inside of houses finally. So we're getting there. It means release ballistas and shit before TC control system. No, they, they tie together. It would be bad for us to release a big, highly anticipated system that doesn't work because there's no connection towards anything. So there's a minimum pack, I would say, which is starting building a city with the services and the rules. Um, you know, the system behind owning that land build on it and then of course constructing siege weaponry weapons and how to siege and also how to defend it all ties together right and then like i mentioned before there is a huge never-ending list when it comes to what kind of additional options structures functions and additional siege machines we would like to see in upcoming patches but uh we have a juicy first pack when it comes to delivering tc offensive and defensive machineries and of course the abilities to siege and fight in a meaningful way rather than just brute force ninja sieges stuff like that that wasn't really um working very well in the first game so again we use that data and feedback from those years to refine the siege mechanics as well <clears throat> uh Can houses be destroyed with TC patch? Yes, uh, any building can be destroyed, even today, obviously, even though it's very unpractical. I'm sure many of you guys have seen the act conflicts with uh, the coalition uh, guilds. And there's been uh, some epic fights going on, uh, destroying gates, running inside ba bases, but um, fully siege a uh, building such as a uh, keep obviously is extremely inefficient inefficient without proper CG mechanics and uh, the whole supply line gameplay loop in place uh, <clears throat> so you can you can damage anything today but at a very restricted rate which is not practical and also as we mentioned many many times before we fully understand uh, the sensitivity and value behind allowing people to rely on their houses their small bases as long as they you know are not obviously in a heavy conflict we should be quite safe in terms of no ninja sieges should happen on a daily basis for our you know random house owner because it, w it won't make sense and the uh, reward for it will not be uh, beneficial at all so there there will be real reasons to siege someone and try to 
claim things or destroy things or weaken uh, guilds. Jesus, that was a strange taste. Um, that gate went down pretty easily without any siege, though. Yeah, they are weak or in hit points, and of course, uh, again, those numbers are not final when it comes to delivering the actual siege patch. Uh, they are low um, currently, so yeah, with a, with a good army, <laughs> you can crunch through that. As we have seen a few times already, which uh, is interesting and fun and exciting. But of course, like I said, some of these numbers may change. Now we we'll actually get real offensive weapons and defense weapons that have a much larger impact on any structure. <clears throat> So an estimated time of arrival for when TC patch will drop? No, we don't have any public dates for that. Only internal dates, and they are not public in any way. Not even to our share owners or anyone. Um, and it is like like we said a few times. I think it's very much more important that we get things right without having the pressure and stress, and also annoy people if we have to postpone those promised or aiming public deadlines so trying to remove that from from me and the team to just heavily focus on delivering the patches as good as possible what will it take for you to do that noob like me you can probably do that soon um yeah we'll have to see when i'm able to jump in for some stuff like that but uh, it would be fun to um I, I I'm obviously when I saw those big battles between acts and, and other guilds, I obviously feel the urge of joining in in terms of playing around and fighting as a team. But obviously I can't join any of those conflicts, even though I wouldn't have a <laughs> a specific impact. But I I really missing the good old days when we had a combat beta where we were fighting on, in uh, two teams and just having a lot of fun. Um. <clears throat> uh, I mean, there are a few areas for sure when it comes to underpowered situations. Uh, the weight class is one of them. Some weapon types that are not heavily used. They are quite weak or underpowered. So there are for sure a lot of room for improvement and tweaks in a lot of those different areas to make more options uh, and different tactics and builds for sure. Yeah, 100%. It's just that right now, you know, if that is done wrongly, we would just upset people or confuse people or it would be a frustration, right? So I think it's very important now. You know, we are s still a small team. We need to fully focus on the big components that we all need to have in place. But then again, after that, we can slowly look over what areas, you know, would we like to focus on and improve in the upcoming focus. When will Barber spin in game? I can't say when. We are working on additional sets of hair styles, um, beard styles, <laughs> tattoos and that stuff like that. And as we mentioned, like, like I said before, we're not sure we want to add more of that in the character creation. It's meant to be a little bit restricted because there's supposed to be this profession in the game later that you can learn and discover those recipes and trade them and sell them from common to actually rare ones. So you can actually have a rare haircut eventually. Uh, so there's some cool stuff tied to that profession. Uh, but again, it's not on the current sprint, as you know. But we are preparing. We have a few artists, external artists that have been... Uh, that are experts in hair and beard, how to create that in a very efficient, uh, realistic way. <clears throat> and uh, it's hard to find those talents, so it's their, their only main focus, and they are slowly working on some of those sets for us, so 
when we have time to add the support for it, we will have that. We will be one of the rare styles. <laughs> I don't know. I think I have a rare style. Don't we have something similar to this already? I think so, right? Um, we do want to add that quality of life function uh, to kill. Yes, the the option to name bags. We have you know got that feedback a while back, and obviously we agree that that would be an awesome quality of life up update. Um, so we will see in upcoming sprints how we can plan some of the quality of life suggestion you have uh, brought up over the you know the months. Uh, oops. Anuxa, thank you for the subscription. Hey Henrik, any idea on when guild roses are be going to be fixed? Right now, some guilds cannot invite people of their guilds. Some guilds remove a player and then suddenly the player is back in guild. Yeah, I, I'm aware of this and I am quite sure it is on our um, tasks where we um, go through polishing stuff like that. So uh, I don't know the exact status if there's any updates on it already that I am not aware of. But it's obviously uh, an important uh, fix update that we need to do sooner rather than later. So I know we have it at least on the table. Reek TV, thank you for the prime. Indica indicator for what weapon is currently equipped is needed. Better. Yeah, that is another very good quality of life function to see what's equipped, right? And also make that a little bit more smooth and efficient so yeah we have th we have those also um you consider adding an indicator of some sort of on how much time is left on clade cooldown that is obviously also a very good um quality of life thing right so it will make sense uh it makes sense that you can see when you can use it again more accurately so yeah for sure uh we need improved weapon switching and our equipment yeah it, that's what i meant with the more smooth way of um, uh, swap weapons we actually had um, the secondary uh, weapon slots on the character window back in the beta but we thought we could do it without it and just use the hotbar by making it more um efficient showing what you have equipped and also make the swap more efficient uh, i would still have to discuss a little bit with the coders if we want to bring back the old hot swap you know like diablo you have this other w um, swap to your other set of weapon or if we can just continue rely on the hot bars <clears throat> no texas holdem is not finished unfortunately i was actually very much looking forward to uh sit down relax in a city tavern and just play poker with you guys that would be awesome so but it will have to come later When can we get 10 few vials so we don't have to combine a keg with a medium vial? Then do a medium with a small three times just to get a 10 EO port. So we're actually having a very big important update with Alchemy with this sprint patch. Along with additional very important uh, Alchemy effects that will give you a lot of more tools, encounters, etc. Which, you know. Is very important for overall balance especially with more magic and stuff like that um we're actually bringing back an old system from the first game which is uh, a little bit similar to path of exile if you play that so you have um obviously like you wrote a different amount of uh, uh, potion um, units in these different sized vials however you can't really choose how to drink them currently right so we're, what we're adding in this next patch is that you will be able to drink from one unit by one click. So if you want to sip two units of something, you just click it twice quickly 
and it will sip the two units from it. If you want to drink the whole 10, 10 units bottle, you click it 10 times quickly. We are experimenting with that, and it looks like that is a good thing, because now we're also getting uh, specific effects that kind of have a um, uh, direct effect, like a purifier as such, which means it wouldn't make sense for you to drink 10 units when it's enough with two or three units to uh, purify something, for instance, with a proper potion. So in that way you can um, use um, have larger vials and you just click two times if you want to have a pur purify, three times you want to add some uh, healing or such. So it works very well in the first game and it's also something that are quite similar to Path of Exile, which the whole world have been playing. So a very good improvement to give you 100% control rather than no control. And, uh, you know, you will be able to obviously... So, alchemists will obviously utilize the strength of the potions, so you don't have a crappy potion. So, today, if you drink all 10 units and it's crappy per, for one unit, obviously it gives the result for all of them. But if you have a more efficient potion, you can drink a few less units and still have more to go and have a better effect. Do you see? I hope it makes sense what I'm trying to explain here. So... You have better control, better refinement of using potions and creating co potions, pretty much. Lies haven't played po po No, 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 sorry, sorry. Uh, it's a huge popular game, right? Where uh, potions kind of works like that. It's just that obviously they don't, they don't have uh, as large potions as we, if you go for the very big ones. But we have a lot more control and options. So it's pretty much how it worked in the first game, and uh, people have been asking to get that back. Um, rather than just chunk one, waste one, have one left, that is the thing now. We may be able to add you know, additional options like that, yeah, shift click drink all units you can spare that that could be uh, a good thing also i will see what options we have Channel with bits when we get permanent circle and ritual pet change as soon as we can. I don't have an exact update, sadly, still. Um, so, yeah, as soon as it's possible, pretty much. Um, all right. Will there be mines like in Mortal 1? Can you specify what kind of mines you mean? We have um, mines in Mortal 2 already, so I need to know a little bit more exactly what you mean with the mines. Pet bags when? We are building a lot of bags and armors currently, so over time there will be more and more. We will have bags for... Um, Quite a few creatures in upcoming patches. Uh, very important for TC to have big carry abilities such as use, utilizing Mulvas and Camparons with bags. General Will it be possible to remove tamed horses, tamed horses like first horse count as primary one won't cost pet points, so tamers can do something like rit ritualism and use level 100 pets. I don't, I don't get it, so I mean you can already use a mount with a ritual pets without a... Um, 
countering each other's, right? Any thoughts on adding new dungeons? There will be more dungeons over time, yes. More points of interest and uh, wildlife roaming uh, threats in different forms. We need we, we have a plan where we're going to add a lot more wilderness spawners and stuff and rewards spread out on the whole mainland because we know we're obviously going to need that with also more players. Uh... TCN of 2023. No, 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 no. We're getting closer and closer. Not that far away. We are getting quite close. Star Wars doesn't really do any dates, eh? Seems like nothing is ever really given an Eta. No, like I said, we're very careful. In the past, we were very, you know, excited to uh, kind of share our internal dates. But as soon as something happened, or whatever reason we had to change that, people got disappointed and frustrated. So we noticed that, you know, we felt more pressure and stress to really deliver, rather than obviously disappoint people on internal dates that we shared with the community. And that ended up in uh, either stress or negativity from those that simply wasn't happy about a, a little delay. So we decided let's avoid that fully then, and... and um, um, deliver when we know we are ready from our point of view. Elementalism, uh, <laughs> elementalism today. No demo man, not today, but next stream is the plan to finally have a sneak peek of the lovely elementalism. Today I want to show you some pretty, pretty epic thing. Maybe it's time now, actually, guys. Um, stay in the happy. Anniversary, will you share some info about the Mulva conspiracy you are accused in? What? What? <laughs> what kind of conspiracy is that, Stain? Please enlighten me. Oh, Steam, you answered a question regarding outside assistance with 3D modeling and such. What are your chances that your pipeline could be summed up and thought to members of the public who are interested in helping. Uh, I could whip up a bag model, some basic writing animation in just a few hours. That would be no difference. Different than what's in game. What's the hold up? So Synchrophonosis, <laughs> sorry for butchering your name. Uh, I mean, we really appreciate support in any form of way. And what I would suggest here, just to, because like I said, there's so many dependencies. So rather than giving uh, information here very specifically or, you know, uh, I think it's best to start with, could you actually send us an email with your, like uh, if you have a portfolio or something, so our creative directors can see your style and also kind of, you know, we can quite quickly see if this is something that are quite close to what we're looking for or need for and can also work with. That I think that could be the first step then. Uh, and uh, then, you know, we can take it from there. <clears throat> uh, right. I'm gonna jump down a little bit here now. Um, yes, we have news about GeForce now. We have actually fixed the crashes. It, it looks like it. Again, I want to be careful about promising 100% fix, but... Uh, I talked to our devs and they found an issue that they have solved. It's on test, so far so good. And hopefully that will uh, speak for itself when we push it live. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm jumping down, guys, so I'm gonna miss some questions here. Um, um, shall we take a look on our Scorpion Blister, guys? I meant like Ridley's some can use Max Horse and Max Combat. Ah, so you mean for Tamers? Ah, okay, okay, I see what you mean. 
a little bit unsure on that. We, we you know, it's it's not a small thing because every month is going to be a little bit different. So um, yeah, I can't answer it at, at this point without really going through the process there, see what it actually entails and means. Um, so <clears throat> yeah, we have the Scorpion Ballista and uh, the model is finished the mechanics is there in terms of you know the desired outcome so we wanted to make something very spectacular you know one of a kind machines that make sense and it just looks awesome and obviously plays both cool but also makes sense and are useful obviously that, that is some some of the key points right and again we try to um, use as much knowledge and experience from the first game as possible so our new Scorpion Ballista have a lot of more agility and use. Um, please give general chat. What do you mean? Um, do you remember to do your back exercises? <laughs> a little bit. I've been a little uh, bad at it. I still need to continue, but it's my back is better at least since last time. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, we have the Scorpion Ballista. I have a little, I have recorded the function of it to give you a taste of um, how it moves around and the mechanics behind it, and it's quite uh, impressive. Um, so you'll get an idea of. Uh, shall we take a look on it, guys? Are we ready for that? Let's do it. So this is the Scorpion Ballista, right? And it can be used both for defensive and offensive, but I think it's a little bit more on the defensive side. Show the goddamn thing! <laughs> Just show it already. Sorry for uh, pulling pulling out the suspension. Uh, I just want to give you some uh, inside background. <laughs> uh, Alright, so can't see it. <laughs> One second, guys. I'm gonna find a clip for you. Uh, so eager, so eager. Um, let me find it. Uh... Alright, so... <laughs> I'm not trying to be a tease, it's just that I, I want to explain a little bit, right? And find a clip while I try to explain and show you what I'm talking about. Let's go. All right. So this is a clip of the Scorpion Ballista mechanics, how you can rotate and look at the freaking mechanics, the mechanics behind it. Uh, it's uh, such a high realism, makes sense. There's logic. I've never seen it before in any freaking game ever, period. So uh, take a look on this, guys. So as you can see, it's a triple A detail on it. You can see all the levels, pullings, loading. Uh, how it rotates. Uh, like I said, th this is uh, not final animation, it's just testing the actual mechanics. So you're gonna see more suspension and, you know, refined animations and power and strength, and of course, insane sound that hits on it. And this is more in, in first person as a test how it will uh, um, feel. Obviously, you're gonna see your legs against levers and obviously in first person you can move around and look but as you can see there's a few levers here right uh, the left one is a um, left one that slowly moves up it's actually a tension build up so it slowly moves up the more you move around and then you have to rebuild that tension the right one is obviously when you fire and the mid section is when you move around up down left right so there's a really cool function behind this that actually makes sense also like I said before, we actually involved uh, engineering that uh, thought it was really fun and awesome to be helping and working with this. Um, and uh, yeah, we thought this this would be a dream job to just sit and design mechanics behind such machineries. Yeah, ignore the motion blur. It's not motion blur. It's just um, how we uh, follow the camera when we rotate it. So it's actually vibrating because it's uh, not following one to one. So ignore that. Uh, blurriness it's not motion blur and it won't be there obviously when uh, you control it how is it powered so you actually weave it up wave it up kind of so there's a, a a tension behind it and you see the far left thing uh, lever that slowly goes up 
when it goes it, it slowly goes up whenever you move around because it's the tension of the spring and then you have to pull, pull it down to reload it so you can move it around and then the tension stops because there's no sp spring tension anymore so you have to pull that lever again to be able to keep moving so it's actually really sophisticated and that is you know a half realistic some things make sense because again how would this move if you just sit there and uh, pull a level how would it realistically move it wouldn't right it needs to have some electricity or power or something like that and our solution was you know something in between here like a, if you imagine a suspension of a spring that is charged up and as long as you have that energy you can move around until there's no energy left and that's when you need to reload it to have more uh, power to move around so it's actually pretty cool um so and also obviously if you are more than one uh, person you can actually uh, be more efficient utilizing the machineries because you need to load it with a heavy as long bolt in the tip sections and um you know if you if you need to go down jump off to load it every time it won't be as effective there will also be some versions of this that are multiple ones. You load a few and you can shoot them quickly and then you have to reload them all. This one is the heavy ass bolt version that really wrecks on impact. Uh, so yeah, I hope you like the design and you know some of the logic behind it actually kind of makes sense, which is pretty cool to try to incorporate in these fantasy games, right? One year anniversary, holy Jesus, indeed. <laughs> One year, I, 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 I don't even understand how one year I have passed. And uh, yeah, time is simply flying. Um, so yeah, I, I hope you like it so far. Uh, so one of them, and then obviously we had a catapult as well. Um, and there will be a few versions of them. Um, and then of course we have the fire arrows. Uh, some hot flaming oil that you can throw down so there's there's gonna be a good starting pack for both offensive and defensive uh, so this will be obviously very dangerous against any soft targets any pets players obviously very dangerous it's the bolt is you know extremely large and powerful uh, obviously take some time and reload that heavy bolt but if you do hit a player or a, or a creature, it will be heavy damage. It will also give quite a lot of damage towards siege machines that is mostly built in wooden structures, right? It won't be as effective as you know shooting on a tower to destroy the tower, obviously. So soft targets, defensive machineries and um, anti-siege machineries is, I would say, its main strength. Um... Obviously, we're uh, working around a balance in terms of should it be a one-shot kill if it's a chest hit. It passes through like, a, you know, one and, almost one and a half meter heavy bolt. So it makes sense. It should kill a player if it hits perfectly in the sweet spot. If it hits an, a, a limb, maybe not a one-shot kill, right? Um, but again obviously very deadly against big animals and creatures and uh, against other uh, machineries so if you see this one aiming for you you are in a dangerous <laughs> situation anti-siege siege engines okay okay <laughs> um yeah, I mean, it makes sense. If this bolt hits your chest or head, uh, you know, it, 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 if you see, I could show the bolt. It, it, it's a heavy ass bolt, so uh, obviously, it's deadly. This is pretty big. You can get a sense of the size of the share, right? You're sitting there in the side here. Um, so it's quite large. So we're actually looking at mobile versions also where they are put on wheels so this could also practically could be a mobile version where you have to have obviously the manpower to push it forward and then just leave it and you will be able to sit and use it the same way so there will be stationary ones and mobile versions 
Can a fat mesh fit the chair? Yes, it's actually dynamic because you know there there's room for the different heights. So this is also one of the things. You may not consider that, oh, okay, you know, pretty straightforward, just create the machine and we should be done, right? But holy shit, there's so many steps. Okay, so what about all the different races and heights, right? Where will your feet and arms be on these machineries? Because you you know there's you know over a meter difference, right? Fat to small ones that becomes a situation all change and ropes everything like that is very complicated to animate and work around and then of course all the mechanics we want to have in a meaningful balanced way so there's a lot of additional work that you don't see at first glimpse that that's also why of the, some of the reason why these things takes time to build we don't want just a magic click done click done or like those machines in some other siege games where you just you know click and done you want to incorporate teamwork tactics player skills and coordination and planning you know all of that and some logic where it, where it makes sense And like I said, this this uh, it takes time to reload, so it's not that you can sit there and shit like a Uzi. You have to consider your targets very carefully, and uh, it's very difficult to hit a player. <clears throat> uh, I mean, it just if it barely hits your hand, yeah, I guess in real life it would rip off your limb very violently and m most likely lead to death. But again, there's always the balance factor contra fun factor that we need to have in a proper place. So that will be more iron out, obviously, the more we play around with it. Uh, just, uh, yeah. Will the ballista ball go through multiple targets or stop at one? We are not 100% sure about that yet. It could possibly continue through. On a target so if you're actually standing on a trail on a line it could actually pass through one and hit another one as well um, there's a few factors that are determined but this is actually one of those there's there's a lot of calculation cost on a node and different parts of the server with some of these obviously siege machines right but the slower they are the more um, crazy mechanics they can support Pretty much if that makes sense uh, so so there could absolutely be room for penetrating one or two persons before it stops and that could be cool right for sure for sure so when this hits you uh, and if it happens to not kill you like i said if it just hits one of your limbs it could absolutely add a debuff because now we have that system, it's very robust and it's very easy for us to add uh, functions to any attack that makes sense. Like, you know, it, maybe it's, you know, I don't know if it gives bleed or something, it, you know, could be anything. And yeah, it kind of makes sense also when, when they're so heavy, if you shoot this into the ground or something, it's kind of, there's so much um, ki kinetic energy that it's, Kind of like a sniper bullet, right? Where, where you know, if it just with with the with the power and force it has, it actually violently rip things apart, right? Almost like a small explosion. And I would say that that fits to this bolt as well. So if you hit it just next to your feet, the, the pure violent energy, you know, the, you will see dirt flying from it when it hits. It makes sense that it also can uh, give you some damage, even though it misses you. But obviously not one shot kill in that case, right? Do we use this to defeat mounted fat mages? <laughs> if if you shoot this on a fat mage on a mount, it would just just uh, explode. <laughs> Either the horse will explode or the mounted rider will explode. So yeah, sure, sure. If you hit. Uh, so yeah, the Ogmers have siege um, 
gifts, clade gifts, which obviously will have strength bonuses in utilizing some of these machineries, right? They will be more efficient in different ways. So obviously if you're heavy into being the siege, the person that uses the sheet siege machineries, obviously a uh, skilled, knowledged Ogmir can uh, benefit um, more efficiency by using some of these machineries. So you can actually use this machine alone, but what you would have to do is actually uh, pull the, go down from it, load a bolt in the top, jump up in the shear again, uh, wind it up, load, and then aim and shoot, right? And then repeat. So being one person doing all that will not be effective, but it's doable, right? You can do all those steps. So if, if you want to have a high efficiency shooting a lot, defending, then obviously you need a friend that keeps loading the arrows in the front. That would be much more efficient. Uh, and like I said before, if it's the mobile version, then obviously you won't be able to pull it alone. You need a team of, I think it's... Um, I don't know if you, we have the minimum of two, where you can just barely start to move it, and up to four people or more, where you actually move it more efficiently. So it's a very cool system. Again, we use the manpower rather than horsepowers. Later on, we want to tie some of these functions into horsepowers, which means you can actually connect mounts to pull them. Sir Hob, happy one year anniversary, Henrik. Congra congratulations. We haven't seen much from elementalism. How is that coming along? I would love to hear how excited you are about it. I love you guys. Thank you very much. And yes, we are working on, on elementalism, obviously. Uh, a lot of people are involved in it. And my plan is to do the sneak peek of elementalism, playing around on the test server and show you guys on my next stream. So that is the plan. Lyrics, I guess that covers your question as well. So the plan is next week uh, to stream some uh, game session of elementalism. When can I install a Scorpion Blista onto a Mulvar Campanon? Good question, good question. <laughs> Not initially, maybe later. Um, so, the wagon and ship system we are building and planning for also will be able to carry anything that fits pretty much. Um, and I can't say at this point how complicated or if it could work to add some mechanics on uh, an actually huge creature but on specific wagons that's that's where you know first where we initially want to support some of it i mean the added seat is just ridiculous but okay what do you mean with just ridiculous obviously you need to sit in a seat or it will fall off like a lunatic come on man you need to think a little bit before you speak <laughs> Look at the angle, because for us to have it efficient, it needs to be able to aim quite straight down and straight up, or it, or we don't have the efficiency, right? And it will fall off like a lunatic if we don't have a shear. So that's the reason. Very simple and clear. <laughs> oh my God, Sir Hub with the gifts, appreciate it. Thank you very much. And they are on bolt weight yet. Uh, we will need high weight characters to efficient reload this. Yeah, the bolt's gonna be very heavy. So again, this is why we absolutely needed the big animals with bags. Because carrying heavy goods, what I mean with that is everything from constructing to obviously use siege machineries. These things are very heavy and you, you won't run around with your bag full with boulders and heavy bolts. You need to transport them using heavy um, uh, mechanics like Camperons, Mulva Beasts, you know, that caliber. See, it is the best part. Obviously, we will all have our personal opinions when it comes to design, right? As always, some, some may like it, some may hate it. That's just how it is, right? 
but we try to make it look and fit Mortal Online, just fit everything else. And we aim for higher realism and logic. And there's a lot of logic behind each machinery, actually, believe it or not, with the mechanic of how can it magically move to the right like this? It actually does it with some uh, load up tension on springs. And that is what you see on your left uh, lever. So it's actually a really, really cool design behind it. Uh, obviously, a little bit magic, but it kind of makes sense. There's some logic behind it. Uh, we get a new moat. In game, or what? I mean, obviously, we, we know that we have a big waterfall. There's a collapse in um, the heights on the world, and there's an explanation behind of this. And so you will be able to use levers or uh, pull ships from one lever le uh, level to another. Obviously, this has been thought through since the beginning, right? That's a little bit more complexity to have more than one level of water sea level. But uh, there's a cool explanation, and I think it, you know, makes things a little bit more interesting. Um, so yeah, obviously, like I said, a lot of testing and polishing, and make sure that it's effective use of these machineries is a big component and balance of course there was always a big challenge and issue in terms of defending in CJC more than one this time we want to make sure that it's uh, exciting and fun to be on either of the sides or you know there's good options and tactics to efficiently defend and uh, because you always have the 360 options in many cases, to plan your uh, attack, but you obviously don't have the same uh, options when it comes to defending. So we're also actually looking on all towers, wall sections to see, um, and, and we actually look. I was looking on that quite a lot when we had a little pre-siege between Act and Coalition when you were running on the walls. Uh, you know, the efficiency of aiming down, protecting the gates. Obviously, we are always very eager to hear your feedback that are, you know, playing around with that and have been doing that already a little bit with the act pre-siege. Uh, but I saw there is room for improvement in terms of those um, holes and gaps where you can actually aim down. Do you, see, do you understand what I'm talking about here? Uh, that kind of feedback to see if we can refine them to be even more efficient for players to use them, def you know, of defensive wise. Uh, Force gaming, that's also exactly what we're doing. So we have a very minimized focus on new content currently. And the reason is because there's a lot of core things we want to get fully polished and into place. And it's very important all of that is in place and ready for the Epic Game release when we ramp up marketing again and um, have a lot of plans to bring in new players in new waves. Obviously, new player experience and polish and stability capacity is number one in the background, right? Um, and then we have long-term content. <clears throat> it's not like, um, you know, World of Warcraft. We have all these um, areas that you play through and then, you know, you're done with it and wait on the next DLC or expansion pack. We add new features every now and then, and new content that allows anyone to take breaks, come back to the game, and there's always new features and gameplay uh, content that you can enjoy. So um, we're making sure that we have a better new player experience, polished experience for everyone, obviously collecting all the reports that the players have given latest month and uh, that is a big focus as well during we deliver the, these long-term end-game features for a lot of the players.
this add instance dungeons and pvp also epic quest lines poggers uh, we don't really want instance dungeons and pvp as you know it's not really that type of game uh, there would be more consequences and natural orders of the game that comes with the zone rules and nation conflicts um but yeah you know one of the core is that there's no loading instances like that in the world and that's one of the excitement as well obviously we need more of of them right to give more options which we're slowly adding over time also lady lovely lux yeah i covered that question uh, earlier in the stream there's plenty of room for improvements when it comes to weight classes uh, some weapon types and some other areas that are simply underpowered not used we plan to bump them carefully over time until they are options for the players so yeah it's just that right now we can't fully focus on all those things we need to focus on a few things Ingves, I was joking, please don't add that. I kind of suspected that was a joke because it kind of uh, sounded more like World of Warcraft, right? Rather than a sandbox and what makes Mortal quite unique. Uh, and again, no one asked this a lot, but I remember seeing pictures of belt lanterns and updates on those. No updates, sadly, at this point. Not yet. Channel 6, thank you very much for the Prime. Can you sit up? Yeah, actually I have a new monitor and my camera is too high. I need to pull it down when I'm sinking down. So yeah, hard to see my beard. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh... When you say plan on balance, but don't have the time, is it really hard to adjust values very slightly to achieve a difference? So, why? Um, so a few people are required, depending on what kind of change it is. Everything from coding to specific access in certain places in a project. So that is a first factor. Who is involved? Who is needed to adjust some things because it can quickly become many factors that are relation related to each other's and that means all of a sudden i may have to uh, stress the crap out of a few developers that are you know have their schedule planned out very carefully and following in that progression and, and all of a sudden i a ninja in by the way do this also change this also that doesn't work uh, that means we will uh, ruin our developers over time they they will you know lose track of what's important and they will be disturbed when they're working on very important things so so that is why you know it sounds again very easy to change a lot of things right very quickly just change one numbers boom done uh, in some cases it's you know easier obviously to do some of those things but quite often there's a little bit more to it and again we don't just want to we need to investigate what is the proper change here. Is it changing a weight? Is it changing one of the damage types? Is it, um, you know, there's many factors that relates to the balance. What is the correct one and how do we do it carefully? So there are several steps and process. And if the whole coming weeks are already 100% planned, scheduled, and every developers need to follow them very closely for us to be on time and deliver what we plan to as you can understand we can't just change that schedule so i hope that makes sense why that is not just you know on the fly something we can do every time we need to focus we need to plan some of that focus like okay we have a balance and quality of life focus here you know from some of the team and then we try to address that cover the design and you know find what's necessary to change and then we do the actual implementation or tweaks or all that and then test it obviously so um yeah and we learn a lot also by a lot of trial and error and some mistakes in the past where we simply need to have a very tight and secured pipeline because you know we're getting closer to our, our big milestone we need to make sure we have a 
fully functioning, effective pipeline uh, in the works and make sure that we have a controlled working environment when we upgrade the game in the future so people don't get upset. Try tilting your camera down. I, I try that. It, it lacks the function to do it more. I have to come up with some kind of solution to tile it down more. I actually... Yeah. So yeah, sorry about that. I uh, have to try to fix that later. <laughs> um... Could we keep the same part of the team that's working on elementalism on refining all magic schools? So when we are finished with elementalism, we're going to take a look on the other schools, yes, to see what may be needed to get them on a good level also before uh, we continue further. Cool ballista, thank you. Uh, there's a lot of work for us to add support for another character slot. We talked about this pretty much every stream, so we are fully aware of the interest. Um, but like we mentioned before, we need proper time to go through the diva system, a possible character slot system, all the consequences to that, how it impacts our whole one character concept idea, the redefine of the skill system for our character, and how it impact player interaction and player trade and, and all of that. So we have to have proper time to go through that carefully before doing possibly any implementation of that. Um, that's why we can't be occupied with that now when we absolutely need to get the stability, bug fixes uh, and the promised features everyone wants in good time now before moving forward. Lyrics, please add a time frame on Siege that you can change once a month so people have to sneak out uh, to your house panel to see what hour they can raid. So we have a much much better design for that so this have obviously been a discussion for a very long time for Mortal Lion in general also started in the first game so I think we have a pretty good view on it and obviously there's other games that do siege windows with timers etc we talked about all of that pros and cons and the conclusion is that I think the majority agrees on that also aligns very good with the core essence of Mortal Lion is that we don't like artificial timers and blocking things, you know, just plainly in a bad way. However, with, with that said, we also understand the value behind these time windows, right? So we actually incorporated a logical way for starting a siege instead. That makes sense. It's actually interesting and, and you know, works. So as an example, I, I think I've talked about this a few times before as well, but just in general, to again explain what I'm talking about is that so you're going to have all these supply lines next to um, a keep <clears throat> and, as, and they are connected to the keep owners. And as long as they are, they have full efficiency on everything, including high defense values. When you want to siege them, you wouldn't just go there with your siege machines and start shooting and sit there for days and days and hope for the best. The efficient way to start sieging is actually cutting off the supply lines from the keep. Just like in real life, you were starving your enemies. This is how it kind of, you know, makes sense in an interesting way. So if you manage to cut off both supply lines and then, you know, hold a iron grip around this and then start putting your siege machineries to start destroying at the keep location, that's when it becomes effective. So there are some really cool mechanics that just make sense and mimics kind of real life starvation, weakening your opponents before you strike. That is our way of uh, sieging. So that means there's a natural process and time and warning for the enemies to kind of adapt. So it won't be a over the night siege, everything gone. There will be a few steps that both alerts you as owners and you will also have the options to... Um, 
during your downtime when you're asleep you can also put your resources into defending with uh, some of your guard and defensive protections uh, but you can't have the, them 24 7 on so you may want to choose to put them on while you're sleeping and then they go off to sleep when you are awake so it's like shifts right the players from the npcs uh, obviously the npcs can't be as efficient as a player when it comes to defending off enemies but they, they may slow down at least and alert uh, anyone being online that is associated with the keep so um Nice concept for casual, like it. What about House and Stronghold? So yeah, that that there are some uh, things we're experimenting with there as well when it comes to it. There are some room for uh, tying a little bit into this as well. Uh, we don't want, obviously, everyone else that are solo and small to be much weaker in terms of becoming in your siege, because this is one of the important things we want to avoid. For us to have a living, growing world with all types of player styles, we can't just have overnight ninja siege and then everything gone everything lost because people will stop using houses if that's the case we we all know that we've seen it also so uh, that's why we need to have the balance around that so real conflicts signing up for conflicts or making enemies that's where you can spend your resources and you know destroying and sieging but other than that it's just random you don't know whose house this is and they're on far away we don't care to start sieging that will be a big waste of everything for you you can but you know it's not gonna be good for anything once my house is gone i'm gone exactly and you're not alone about this there so obviously we have all the different types of players we have the hardcore pvp players siege players we have something in between pve exploration crafting um, trading and we have solo players, small group players that just want to tap out from that conflict and just build awesome houses, decorate them, collect things and just enjoy the game. Just like people did in Ultima Line and Valheim and those popular games. It's a big component for a lot of players and we know this. Therefore, we absolutely need to balance mechanics around to offer that to all our players. And then those that sign up, obviously grabbing a keep, you will be up for grabs, right? Because there are only a limited type of keeps. So you are kind of sign up for that. Anyone may want to go for your keep and uh, start sieging using those process. So, um, and there will be more reasons as well over time that you can claim and fight for. And also uh, the relic war will eventually start, which also obviously puts players to tap into that kind of conflict. And that's where it absolutely makes sense to commit sieges, right? Uh, <clears throat> important question with only castles have guards or also strongholds so anywhere where, where you can start constructing uh, it's uh, a barrack building pretty much if you can construct a barrack building that's where your guards lives and you you equip them and give them the functions this is the starting step um, and if you fulfill those uh, requirements that's when you can utilize guards with a few options if they should be stationed somewhere or what kind of option we may offer where they should be and also their work hours so they won't be able to stand there 24 7. So like i said you, you have to choose um if he if they should be working when you have your worst downtime you know your time si time zone wise if everyone is asleep you're a full you know guild from one location and you have very few online 24 7 and obviously that that is a good option to add those guards during that small time frame and they won't be able to be fully um protecting your city 24 7 like i said so you have to carefully choose those time frames where it fits with when your guild members are um, playing pretty much so it's also a very cool way of giving better balance when it comes to tc guards in a good way Um, I mean, obviously, guards will be quite restricted to a few rules, right? So you can't just spread them out throughout the whole map. 
Uh, and like I said, you can also... In your control land, you will be able to choose are you a free, open city, are you aligned to a nation, are you, you know, protecting um, good f gameplay, or are you a mercenary, evil city that have the opposite kind of guards that you don't allow anyone to enter this area. Um, there will be a few options for the players here. So any city that constru can construct uh, barracks can utilize some guards. So it depends on the TC function that you expand into. How hard will it be to siege a stronghold? I mean, a stronghold will have high defense, a lot of hit points, so it will still be a, obviously a big component to wreck down. A little bit similar to a keep, just a little bit smaller, right? Um, so it would be a big commitment to try to destroy a stronghold. We're not really looking into Lictros. Lictros are the extreme capital protection, right? The high security areas. Uh, obviously players can higher guards, but I'm not sure when it comes to lictors. There are very specific specific rules around those. And of course we also want the players to be a main factor of controlling the cities. The siege equipment be stolen. Yeah, I mean anyone can jump up in this siege machine if it stand there. So, uh, you know, that's, that's an important part. What about correct Lictor armor? We are remaking the Lictor armor. They will be back eventually. Keeps are we going to get various customization. The layout all the same. One entrance in with an, an inner courtyard. I think this will be a negative when trying to defend a keep. Uh, so there's a few things that I think is an important improvement as well. So yeah, if, if you breach the walls, you can right now go throughout around the whole wall sections, right? And obviously that is a security weakness. So we're looking to add options for doors so you can still be on the inner wall sections while the enemies if they breach the outer wall the first section you still have that additional defense level uh, we're also looking to add doors inside keeps and buildings so you can actually design your keep to be multiple level defense as well and now with siege you will eventually be able to obviously wreck a wall in a keep and run inside the keep rather than just stand there and destroy it fully so that means uh, if obviously enemies are hiding inside the keep they push back you cannot start sieging the wall section or even the door break it down enter and try to kill your enemies and really you know defeat them at one place so you don't have to sit there and shoot thousands of boulders to fully wreck everything you know it's enough to go through what you need to get enemies that makes sense. I don't know the exact resources you will need to construct this uh, ballista, for instance. Uh, obviously, you will have quite a lot of wood, some steel, right? 
so that those will be the main component i would say um you know nothing very special other than some of those main resources that you need to have enough with pretty much like air is going to be in mail unlike modern one or specific to like uh they may have locations in Milan, similar to in more than one, but obviously, as you know, they, they, are, they come from the, the continent of Lycia or, or Mothar, which is also called. Um, so we may have them in Milan as well in every location. Similar to the Mulva Beast. Their home land is also, especially the Arctic ones from Nordveld, right? Uh, but the hairy mainland one also is quite natural in, in the main line of Milland. Did I hear wood? Wood! Can you make stop priest resurrection, resurrection through wall? Thank you. So, obviously we know everyone is resurrecting through the walls and it's been quite convenient for a lot of people that uh, can do that a little bit sp spread across the world. Obviously along with the more where you will be able to build cities, a lot of cities spread out on Milan, hire the priests to set their own rules and different options. There will be more options to priest location resurrection, obviously in the hands of the players instead. So along with these things, we may also take the step to obviously disallow some of those mechanics that, are, that is a little bit iffy, right? But we want to commit those options at the same time. When will the NPC comes to life and start doing their business in citizen camps? So we have a, a, a start of that plan for the Epic Game release as well, where NPC citizen will be a little bit more alive, just like you said. I think it adds a lot to the immersive level and new players starting and joining in a city. They won't just see these NPCs standing there like in the corner like this all the time. They may actually walk around, they may work a little bit, they may cook, they may lumberjack, they may be smithing. And they may be talking, walking around. So we plan to do one round of adding to that step. Uh, if things goes as planned. Oh. Does the ballistas and other siege weapons have durability? Will it be affected by which material you build it with? Yes, they all will have durability. And they also deplete over time. So if you use this one, shoot a lot of bolts your ability will slowly go down. If you whack at it with hammers or axes or shoot fire arrows or specific elemental, elementalism spells that do some OA or, or, or structural damage, you will also obviously reduce the durability. Uh, there will most likely be, uh, this is some of the things that we haven't really determined yet, but there will most likely be some ways of um, repairing a little bit uh, obviously we don't want it to be um, if it has for instance 100 of 100 and if it goes down to 5 out of 100 you can't just repair it up to 100 100 again if the repair mechanic uh, goes into them which we, I'm a little bit unsure of because of important balance in that case it would at least go like more like 50 out of 50 and then slowly decaying over that but I'm not sure if, 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 you know, if that's a good thing it's very sensitive obviously with siege machines so committing trying to take them out before your base is taken out is obviously a very important factor to prevent a big siege from happening and also like i said with some of the new mechanic you don't really have to commit the same way as you did in the first game where you have to shoot thousands of bullets to destroy a keep you can partially destroy a keep with this new system like wrecking the doors wrecking the walls and flooding the uh, keep so Hopefully that will also give more exciting, meaningful 
sieging rather than just all in all out you know you don't have to wreck everything to the ground why is there a ping limitation for people with shit connections <laughs> what kind of statement is that the ping limitation is there for everyone to be playing on the same level and be synchronized so if you have the worst best ping in the world you won't benefit from 5ms because the ping limitation will push you higher if you have very high ping already then obviously you can't benefit more from that high you know the sweet spot is where the ping limitation number is if you're much higher than that that's when you start noticing power issues and stuff like that if you're as long as you're very close to or below the ping limitation you're playing on the same terms so um yeah I mean, the server is the king when it comes to it determines and synchronize any attack and such. And the server makes sure that everyone waits on the same update. That's why you won't benefit with FEM, F, FEM MS or 100 MS. But if you go above the ping normalization number we have set where the server waits, that's when we start adding delay on top of that. Just to keep it very easily. Raid FM AM houses. You you won't be able to raid them. Lyrics. Uh, I mean, you can, but you will lose too much value time and be eventually stopped. Long has the time been working on a ballista? Looks great. Uh, I don't know exactly how long. Obviously, like I said, there's a few different components. One is what kind of gameplay mechanics do we want to have? As in, how do we want it to work and encode it? And then, of course, the visual and design and mechanics to make some logic behind it. Like I said, to move this machine, you would have to have a power source, right? But we solved it with the far left le lever that you can see now. You see that it goes up slowly, and it does that only when you move the uh, machine around. If you stand still, it stops moving, and that's the tension and spring. So it's actually really cool, uh, a logical explanation of how can you move this one around by just pulling a lever right, left, up, down. So, um, you know, including all of that, and obviously it takes a while to build a machine like this. But the thing is, we you reuse... The core mechanic of how to use a siege machine for all the machines we're building right now so we only need to build the code function one time pretty much and then we reuse it on a set of of machineries when a catapult is a little bit more straightforward right um you know a classic catapult i will load and shoot this one was quite fun to work with because it has such a unique uh, mechanic behind it that kind of makes sense the balancing gameplay manager would not be cheap but got 20 years in gaming yeah we got pretty much the same uh i got also 20 years of gaming experience but not only as a gamer but also as a developer with Mortal Line. So um, we have some really veterans, obviously, when it comes to game design and coders now over the years. So I think we are in a pretty good position to creating the mechanic we are creating that, you know, is our main focus. We may not be good at creating uh, other types of games, but I think we are getting quite good at making this type of game would be strange if not over 16 years of just building this. <clears throat> uh, yeah, don't get, get us started, Lou Hodo. Don't get us started at all, then. That's, that's best. 
I mean, it's interesting when we sit with the coders and design a system and how it works. And then there's always one pro coder on the internet that says, no, that's not how it works. This is how it works. And he just, you know, makes a story in his head. And and he managed to fool quite a few players also with that because he's a cool coder and you know him. So obviously he's trustful and what he says matters, right? Rather than what we have coded. <laughs> quite hilarious. But uh, there will always be those uh, <clears throat> so the thing with being hit on distance uh, this is something that I also talked about in the past uh, other MMOs disguise distance hits in a very clever way if you noticed pretty much all MMOs on the market today what happens when you do a, a strike what happens then guys Come on, let's go through it. Uh, first of all, that strike doesn't look like our strike. It's not realistic. And what do they add on top of that blade? What is it, do you think? It's a beautiful thing, but that's one of the explanations of why they add it. And that is because MMO has a latency. They add a number. But what I mean is an effect. If you do a strike, it flies like a rainbow of fire, you know, crazy stuff. And that fire is far. So it looks like that fire is hitting you, which means it looks like he's hitting you. But in fact, if you have the same accuracy and no fire bullshit and just, you know, see what you're getting, they would be hitting you on various differences uh, in, in length. So we want to build a more realistic cool MMO that doesn't do flashy rainbow effects like that but the downside is having that kind of accuracy um, over MMO is not really possible because of all the different variations and flukes that happens over internet today you can experience this in World of Warcraft as well or any MMO for that matter but like I said they, they have a very good way of it disguising a lot of that to connect so it looks like it feels so all that fire goes way through you way through the enemies and the creatures and everything and that's a very good and clever way of making oh sure it hits me because i can see all this fire flying or whatever effect that is um we could add that effect and all of a sudden we are not talking about hey it's missing me no because the fire is always flying through you right but do we want to do that the downside is like you said People have to adapt that, hmm, looks like he was hitting me from uh, a distance where I shouldn't be hit. Yes, but all veterans learn that quite quickly and they always adapt to parry and they will parry even though it doesn't look like it uh, connects. So this is one of those things that can never really be perfect in a game like this. But what are our options to, you know, start rainbow effects, dumbing the down of the accuracy or we want to you know, still have what's unique and very cool, but you have to more adapt around it. I hope that makes sense. So hold on, we, we, we won't go there because, uh, like I said, you are uh, probably a professional coder yourself and you know how everything works on your end, right? So, you know, there, there's no point of us explaining to you how it works in Mortal Line and um, you can believe what you want and that's fine, right? There's no point of arguing. So let's um, not. We do enjoy or at least think it's correct for us to at least explain what we are doing, how it works, and then it's up to the players to, you know, either enjoy it or not or, you know, believe it or not. But um, we write the codes, right? Yeah, there's no reason to uh, get feisty in here. That's not the place and time. Uh, we can all be adults and mature in here, hopefully, and um, ask questions, talk about things, but respect each other's, including when we don't like the response, right? That's all, all we can do. Uh, you plan an animation to chop trees. What do you mean? We have animation when you chop trees and mine.
That made serious sense. Yeah, I know it's very hard to um, explain game development sometime. We do our best. Um. To make it possible to set your house strongholds to a public status with no code to offer more of a service to the community than just benefiting yourself. Or even make it so a guild and specific guilds can use it without the code. Maybe add secure layers for a chest. Yeah, we, we want to promote the options to, you know, build a little city that can be open for everyone and you can actually somewhat benefit from having players using your services. Very quick question that have been asked a few times here. Um, how many assets in the game are purchased and reused? Is the Ballista also purchased? No, so I've covered that question a lot of times. So um, Epic Games promote game developers in the world by building a lot of core assets they know that the whole world will use, including the giants are using now, which is you know common stuff like trees, rocks, some buildings, stuff that doesn't really matter in terms of gameplay or something obviously that are not unique to the game and for us as a small team there's like 90 percent of the other developers in the world utilize the unreal engine its strength behind it rather than building those mechanics ourselves and also obviously now they have a very large team that are scanning uh, objects to put to developers to again help developers and and increase efficiency in game development, which is really awesome. And like I said, more and more giant companies are using a lot of these components and assets also. Um, so, like I said, obviously we try to make use of all that where we can uh, save time. And then of course we need to spend the, the time on where where it's unique for Mortal Line, like this Ballista. Obviously this is all custom built. We spend a lot of time on them. And everything that is custom Mortal Line, all the clades, um, all mechanics, statues, lore-wise, obviously all of that is um, custom-built from our artists. And that's where we spend the time where it actually matters. <laughs> when it's becoming a common thing today where Epic, Epic Games is trying to mode the whole world in uh, make, focusing on, on the game itself rather than spend 80% of resources in building things that is already built. Like why build a rock again when you can buy a good rock, for instance? Uh, <clears throat> Eric, I love your game. Thank you for your work. I have multiple friends thrown away from the game directly tied to um, uh, the relentless griefing found in game. Whoever see more reasons not to kill everyone you see, revisiting the crime and punishment system is a must, I believe, before release. Also, memo players are casual and can't be or with being killed in constantly. Yes, we have a huge task for this for the Epic Game release for exactly this reason. Uh, I talked about it a lot of the times as well because obviously it's a big question for a lot of players. And uh, at the same time, obviously, we have the hardcore PvP or murders getting a little bit nervous when we talk about it because, you know, obviously we won't ever do the disabled PvP or, you know, stuff like that because we believe we can still have one world with, with the full freedom and, and consequences. But yes, we do have to work on the zones and areas, security, and reason and promotion not to kill noobs and also give reasons for the players and murderers and PvP players to actually compete uh, in a different location or world where that matters and make them happy and get uh, enjoyment while new players and those that want to avoid PvP can try to you know avoid that and being in more high security zones and slowly take their pace outside of those zones until they reach the wilderness eventually where there are no uh, consequences at, at all in no man's land pretty much but but then you have the options as a new player so whenever you're ready for that kind of danger risk reward that's when you also you know commit to that step 
So we are working a lot on that, uh, especially for Epic Game release. And did you find your beard on Epic Game Store? I did. I did. I, I bought it all. I actually had to rebuild uh, 19 rocks because we need to convert them into nanites. There is not much nanites ready as it's a content anywhere on Epic Games Store. So uh, there's a big lack of a lot of that which a lot of developers are building currently including us in a few areas um So hold on, I don't think it's that you are, you know, the brave hero that everyone dislikes because you speak up when no one else is. It's more of an interpretation and personal experience as well. And when I give the time to explain something that doesn't fit your view, you get very offensive and rude. And people seem to think that as well. And then we have a off-track, de derailed discussion of fanboys and heroism and all that crap. We can refrain from all that. Come on, we are adults. I think we have been here for quite a while. Let's hear our different versions and opinions and that's it. We can move on and respect what we are trying to build and we can all respect each other's, right? I mean, it's very clear, right? If, 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 if there's too many things that someone doesn't really enjoy or like in Mortal Line, there's thousands of other MMOs out there. Uh, we have a very clear audience and growing population that think Mortline is on track, moving in the right direction and have a very exciting future and already spending thousands of hours in the game, obviously enjoying it very much. And we are very happy about that, obviously. Without that we wouldn't have continued in this direction. Have the game been here since before MO1 was, a, was on Steam? Do you have plan to deal with the spin jumping ballerinas that are so pro prolific in game right now. It's happening in group fights and no just in duel now. And it's so cheesy to be doing this in heavy armor. Uh, it's a good discussion. We've also had had a lot of streams, right? Uh, I don't know if, if you have covered some of my responses on it, but there's obviously many aspects that are uh, tying to that. A lack of counters and options and tactics uh, is important to get into the game before we can limiting that more uh, and also naturally convince the players to use other tactics rather than ballerinas, right? At the same time, there's a lot of people that are adapting and mastering the ballerina moves and actually starting to enjoy it and in some cases think it's cool and can actually, you know, outperform other players with pure skills by perfecting some of that so it's not that easy just to say it's all bad it all should be removed instantly i think it's a um, very sensitive area that we need to be very careful about when we adjust it um uh, which means if if we have others you know attack starters counters parry breakers obviously those tactics will be highly effective and you people may slow down the ballerina moves naturally already there. But I wouldn't agree that it's done in group fights. I, I see every single group fights and no one is doing ballerina because it kills them instantly. In duels, yes, absolutely yes. And it's unnecessary to kind of finish off when you're on a higher level. Um, so I think it will change naturally when we add special moves, for instance, for every single weapon group. Plan an animation chop through the trees falling on the ground. Ah, I see what I mean. Uh, 
we have a system where we have discussed where this is possible but we can't it's a huge project and we can't make that happen in this near spring time frame also because of the value of it won't be worth it so i would say it will be somewhere down the road uh, we may want to revisit something like that where you actually see the trees falling but not in the near sprints How much will only fire improve graphics and performance approximately? Uh, right now it's a little bit impossible to say. Um, there's a good, a lot of good improvement in Unreal Engine 5 and there are some new technology, uh, next-gen visual candy that obviously can be utilized without completely wrecking the performance but a lot of it do rely on next-generation uh, hardware as well, such as Lumens. Lumens is pushing the generation forward when it comes to looking just amazing with the lights and shadows but it comes at a cost if you don't have a pretty new graphic card uh, you won't really benefit from a lot of that without going down heavily in performance uh, we are also heavily cpu bound which is always a big challenge when it comes to building large world in unreal engine period um, but there are a few things where we can utilize and optimize for Unreal 5. Uh, like I said, there's a few areas that are improved, works better. But there's also, also a few things that we are a little bit disappointed in, in terms of the, uh, the world composition streaming function that we were hoping would be the thing that we actually started building a year ago. But when we saw Unreal 5 is building it, no, we're happy and we can use that instead. We have that build today, but it's in beta. Beta currently is not good for good enough for us. So um, our devs are not completely happy with everything in terms of they're still in a very early state. And we, if, if it's too unstable and simply doesn't work, it breaks every now and then, breaks our work and content, we can't rely on it. So in some cases, we do have to rely on this old um, structure that we have in Unreal 4. And in some cases, we can utilize the new functions and improved tools in Unreal 5. Uh, so we plan to do um, uh, an update to Unreal 5 quite soon when it comes to um, uh, getting everything in place and ready, but we are not enabling the big uh, guns such as Lumis, etc. because that, that is the last step that we prepare for the Epic Game release. Uh, but just making sure everything is stable, running good, and that we have the op optimization in place that we can rely on is the first important step. And then we, we will uh, give Lumis as an option because it wouldn't be good to first have a big optimization, everyone notice a, a big improvement, and then kill all that performance gain by forcing Lumis on everyone. Everyone is not running around with 40 generation cards or equivalents, um, which is very powerful ray tracing cards. And that also handle lumens much much better it wouldn't be fair to force everyone using that and lose a lot of frames so that's why we uh, are looking to add that as an option so if you do have the hardware you can use it if you think you're old stuff and losing too much performance you can disable it it will still look beautiful and better uh, a little bit better in some cases uh, but you should see uh overall improvements uh, with the work we're doing currently in terms of raw performance and those starter doom locations in the world um, every game uses assets i design sound effects packs in real life and my assets are purchased some even by AAA, uh, so such things are as a, as a game today that doesn't use assets. Yeah, you're absolutely right. There is like this doom room or whatever it is that oh those bastards use game assets. Oh boohoo! And we've been completely open with it since day one. Yes, <laughs> for the hundredth time, we buy these assets because it makes sense, and that's the reason Epic Games put them there. And we are a small team, so we benefit even more from saving time, obviously. 
But you're also right that AAA companies uses a lot of these assets now also. Uh, you know, a lot of it, especially mega scans now. So, you know, it's, it's a thing in the past where everything has to be built from manually. You can even bypass a lot of manual work today with the new technology in Unreal Engine. And they built a pipeline to help and support and, you know, re reduce a lot of those bottlenecks that is very difficult. And that's why they're all in those giants dominating the game market in, 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 in most cases. So it's, it's just good for the game industry and for game players, gamers, because there will be more options over time. You can convert any static mesh from Unreal 5 to Nanite once your project is converted to Unreal 5. Yes, we know, but if we just convert a static mesh into a Nanite, it doesn't do anything. Because the me static mesh is not built for Nanites. The whole point of utilizing Nanites is actually benefiting from the mechanic by Nanites. And what I mean by that is, we have the old school static mesh today, which means they are low poly models with baked details. That's how you get around uh, saving the performance with low poly counts, but you can still have the uh, very great visual effects and details by baked map. So this is where you can kind of bypass some of that work, but also some of that fake details. You, you use the nanites geometry instead to have those details, and you can remove some of those detail maps, which means you save maps, like texture maps. And that is the big cost on your in your games all the texture maps that you're loading because you need plenty of them to make something look next gen you can remove some of that and uh, polygons doesn't cost the same way as it does on a normal static mesh using nanites in unreal 5 but as you can see nothing of what we have and anyone have is supporting nanites by just converting it yeah you can convert it but it doesn't do anything so for us to Utilizing it, we need to work on the static mesh also to make sure that you uh, Nanite's actually utilizing it the way it's meant to. So there's a lot of work now and a lot of artists in the world is building Nanite stuff currently because there's not much yet. Uh... <clears throat> All right. Mm. I think I'm falling behind, guys. So sorry for that. Uh, I will try to go down a little bit quickly here. Any news on elementalism? I plan to do a sneak peek next week, so you can see for yourself. Lyrics, I saw the people were hammering down the gates, but they quickly stopped when they were hammering the keep, right? Because the keep is a thousand times harder. And you do need an army of 200 people to take those down those keeps down quickly and they gave up within minutes when I saw okay the keep is no joke with the hammers so you know and those gates have way less hit points today it's not very every day you uh, siege down gates you do it with uh, some of the biggest group in the game currently not the norms but interesting right You think will the population of players back to the 10k like last year? So obviously with the Steam release we dropped players instantly because of the problems we ran into, right? We, we, we have covered that quite in detail. What we need to do, what the process is, how to get in place and be ready. So everything got paused, including the game mechanics that everyone was looking forward to, such as TC. And all marketing, everything was paused, and we are simply working on making sure 
you can handle a greater player population and enjoy TC and all those functions that we're delivering soon. Uh, so when we relaunch, obviously TC is going to bring a lot of action, I believe. I think we all know that already. And the Epic Game release will also mean it's a big milestone where we also start the marketing again, all the influencing that kind of half started as an explosion in a stress test, but we stopped everything when we did release. We're going to re-initiate that uh, marketing process and have also worked a lot on a new player experience to make sure that new players get a much better experience overall and, and there's a higher chance for, of them becoming a player. So obviously our goal is over time again to obviously grow past um, uh, those numbers and the question is how long it will take. Like we said many times we're here for a, for a marathon for many years to come we want to keep growing every year and hopefully reach some very exciting numbers and every time we obviously um, the more resources we get the faster we can also expand the game it goes a little bit hand in hand but yeah it's already already you know been going up and people are very much looking forward to TC now when they also see that large scale balance is actually working we solved it it's a big burden released from our shoulders um, next patch we also have a very big important optimization on the overall player population capacity I absolutely think there's still a very good chance to you know reach numbers like evil line have had uh, everything obviously is fully based on how we deliver upcoming patches, stability, capacity, and obviously people are enjoying the content we focus on. And that's also why we want to have this community community discussion. What will they like to see and play around with in the upcoming sprints? So we focus on the right things. Uh, so absolutely we have a you know any opportunity in the world to become a very large MMO game. Obviously, we may not be competing with those World of Warcraft numbers anytime soon. That that because of the also the nature of the game, right? It's not that casual as we know. It's not meant to be that casual. It's not meant to be compete with those type of game. It's not meant to be a linear theme park game. But we see a huge growth in the more niche hardcore games such as Rust, Tarkov, Valheim, those type of game that have a lot of in common with Mortal Lion that more and more players can enjoy. And there's 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 a lot of few hundred thousand players in those games that can very much enjoy Mortal Lion all the time. And depend you know Mortal Lion is also a game like, okay, what's new now? I've had a long break. Oh cool, there's this feature on this magic school or whatever. And uh, over time there will be more and more that will attract more and more play styles in the world. So you know there's no boundaries over time how many players we can attract from many different play styles there's no time frame for epic game release we need to do it good all right um Retray mesh and general static mesh like housing going to be integrated to Unreal 5 Nanite system. No, not initially. So like like I mentioned before, we want to make sure that we get the bang for the buck. So performance is a very big factor, right? We want to optimize the game. We want to make sure everyone notice that you see a good improvement overall FPS, but also the streaming stuttering in the world. We want to minimize that as much as possible. That's the number one step. And then we, we want to beautify as much as we can utilize Unreal's engine's technology, such as nanites and lumens. But it goes in those two steps, I would say. And so our game is unique in a way. 
that you can build you can collect hundreds of players in one location and you can build a city and make a huge valley completely filled as a city and that's up to the players right so obviously we need to consider that and make sure that everything is highly optimized so it doesn't become like a valheim when you start building crazy you got to two fps eventually and couldn't play anymore so they had to restrict a lot of that and work around that so we want to we don't want to get in that position right and uh, wreck the game performance whenever people are building so in some cases we um, need to play the safe card obviously make sure that it's optimized and then secondary comes to pushing the visual limit as much as possible as you can understand gameplay is is the first step right more at 90 fps when you start raining ouch that means you have a very old computer way out of generation uh so yeah obviously you won't be able to use in lumens but it will see uh an improvement for sure in raw performance but that sounds as a very old computer my friend 9 fps that is mm, yeah <laughs> i mean we have a very complex game where it could be hundreds of players on the screen and it's currently the best looking characters in the game very high realism and one of the most beautiful mmo on the market currently if you ask the community so obviously that would come at some cost and requirement on your hardware right it's not really the, the hardware budget for world of warcraft uh very very low cartoonish low poly count with no really high-end visual technology you know it's not next gen like unreal 5 is so of course it comes at, at a requirement on hardware also to be able to enjoy it right we try to be able to downscale it a lot but we have to pull the line somewhere right uh <laughs> that's some crazy questions sometime We're going to add free to play haven on only five epic release no we can't do it simultaneously we need to be very careful and not just adding a lot of things because you know uh, we risk stability bugs polish stuff like that if we, if we keep adding more on top of what we have planned but it's uh, obviously a very important component we want to add sometime after the epic release because i think it's a very suitable way of making awareness marketing to get people to try the game that are very unsure haven't heard about it they don't want to commit yet and they can try it on haven for free and if they like it they can commit later so for sure it's something we most likely gonna want to have uh, sometime after release does that mean modeline 2 will not be using nanites no we will use nanites but in limited ways because like i said just converting everything we have to nanites today won't make make a difference you won't notice a difference you won't see anything and if we don't add uh, geometry details and removing some of the normal maps or whatever map that may be that adds the details we won't g gain the performance gain either i mean it does handle the the loading occlusion automatically on nanites on distance and when something is including partly of those meshes so that part obviously is something that we instantly can, can benefit from using nanites but all the other areas where there's also good improvements and visual improvements we have to work on those meshes quite a bit and we have done some of the work there but we can't just obviously rework all models in the whole world uh, we have to pick where it makes sense and where we get most bang for the buck and for instance obviously when we're building something new now uh, something a static mesh that are crazy in detail obviously we built with nanites which means tons of polygons there's no limit we can remove some of those detail maps and we don't have to create the low poly model so in that way we have caught quite a few things that save us both development time but also obviously going to make it look insane when you walk up to this like 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 a statue or something that we can just throw on infinite amount of polygons and a lot of the details is in the geometry instead so everything new that we plan and build for this obviously 
will be built with the Nanite pipeline. Um, Right, I'm gonna jump down again, so I may miss your questions, guys. Uh, sorry, but uh, I'm way behind. Sorry, I, I thought I was closer. Holy shit. Okay, I'm up to date. So let's see. Um, Bennett, do you have any information to give us concerning the taxes for houses and stronghold when TC comes? So we want to update this to make it very clear and simple uh, that hopefully we will also be able to give the taxation cost upkeep on your character window. So you can just quickly look there and very clearly see you know, if you need to get, get paying some taxes or whatever you need to do to keep your city or structure safe. Uh, we notice a few tickets every now and then. Oh, I took a break or I didn't know I lost my house. And um, obviously some people get a little bit upset when they lose their house because they have been away from the game. But it's also an important balance factor where eventually we're going to have no more room in Milan for player houses. Which means if you're inactive from the game, you stop playing or taking a very long break, you need to obviously consider risk losing that house or kind of transfer it or sell it or you know make the preparation if you are taking a break or, or if you don't care obviously. But I'm not sure, you know, we can just expect that you can take those breaks without considering that preparation, come back, and that, you know, it should still be there. Because other players want, needs the ground to build, and if you're not active or paying the upkeep, there's a natural flush to give space for those that are active. But of course, you will have plenty of time to prepare that kind of procedure. And do you plan to rebuild towns with nanites mesh for and refine or off to some point? I mean, obviously we want to utilize this tech wherever we can and just make crazy things, right? It's such a new new technique and even developers in the world doesn't know the best practice yet. Epic Games are also optimizing and refining those tools as we speak. I mean, it was just in the latest patch they made nanites work on foolish. It didn't work in the 5.1, 5.0 but it does in 5.1. So every update, obviously, they make good improvements and optimization in these areas. So it's still quite new, right? Um, but of course, we want to utilize it where we can and where, where it's supposed to be utilized. But it's a whole new pipeline that is quite new to the industry. So it takes a while to get going there, you know. We are we are, we are evaluating, testing, and, and, and measuring the differences here just to see first of all where do we gain the performance and secondly how can we push the visuals so um it's tricky and obviously depending on the buildings of course we could add a build a nanite house with millions of polygons and it just looks insane um but again we, we need to kind of evaluate where is the most bang for the buck where is it most worth it where we spend 3d model modeling work currently uh i mean i don't think we have the game looks pretty good right uh, i think there's nothing that really stands out this is way too old or out of fashion we, we should rework that fully and we push the characters extremely far because we wanted them to last for many years before they feel a little bit out of date um so, so yeah, and I mean, building us a building is also quite easy to make it look good without 100% utilizing the nanites with millions of polygons because sometimes it doesn't make sense or it doesn't really improve it. So it's that also. We need to find where it makes sense. Um,
Uh, your ocean underwater sucks. <laughs> Alright. Yeah. I mean, we haven't really worked on underwater because we don't have the AI underwater yet. Obviously, along with AI underwater, you will see more content and st stuff underwater. Turing Castle looks like it was ripped from a PS1 game. Uh, I, have, I actually heard more people say it looks insanely sick. It has more polygons than anything else in the game. And it's actually that is actually one of those buildings that we could re-import uh, into utilizing nanites. Because we had to optimize that heavily and throw a few hundred thousand polygons away. We could actually put them back and it would look even more sick. So that, that's actually one of the few structures where we can utilize nanites in a pre pretty awesome way, I would say and not losing the performance. So so that's actually, I would say, the best viable building currently to utilize nanites. You need to own a town. You need to own the nearby keep to make a player town with guards. Also can keep owners change house the stronghold around the area taxes rate uh you the only requirement is that you need to construct a barrack and hire the functions in that barrack that's when you can utilize a guard for your city and yes any area influence where others is living you can set taxes Do you think having a bird will affect your ability to work with a team in game development? I'm not sure, Merkaba. I don't I'm not sure. <laughs> How would it affect? Uh, will casino tables be a furniture item that can be placed in town? I really want to make my own gambling tavern if they are to be a house furniture they will have a different rarities uh, to add player progression and so <clears throat> one of the requirements we're looking at here is having a table and place the game on the table that and that should be it I mean, the, the most common thing we heard during the stress test when thousands of new players saw the Tyrion Castle on distance was Holy shit, this is insane! And then when I in, went into the town, they, they were just blown away. That was the first e experience feedback that it j was just out of this world. But yeah, maybe if you get up close, maybe that's a different story. But it was overwhelmingly like uh, a wow factor for most new players. I don't know if that have changed or what. But yeah, like I said, that is something that could very much benefit from the Nanas because we had to push it quite hard uh, performance-wise, poly count-wise. We should be able to undo that and just give it the juice with Nanites and still don't, still have good performance. So, so that's actually, you know, make sure it looks good both on distance and up close. <clears throat> and I can know having a bear is important to you, my friend Judy can't grow one. Any tips? <laughs> what kind of question is this, my friend? Either you have the the hair and, and beard genes or you don't. That's it, I guess. There, there's nothing else to do. <laughs> My FPS was out of this world, yeah. I bet it is, Kelly. I bet it is. I 
think we need ammo too because of many hackers in ammo too. We ban those hackers. Trust me, we ban them on a weekly and daily basis. It's just that we don't make updates about it, but we remove them from the game. We still remove a lot of items and characters and accounts on a daily basis. And it's, it's never gonna end. It's a very sad battle that we have to uh, spend a lot of resources and time into forever. We just have to plan for that. It will never stop. And it's the same in any MMO game or online game for that matter in the world, period. The lighting looks bad in Teen Room. Lumen's gonna change that. Trust me, I showed you some picture of that in Teen Room and it just looks insane. It's a texture that throws it off. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said, we have to, we have to cripple the castle quite hard. And, you know, shadows not showing on, on that distance, make it look flat and, and boring, so we have to fake a lot of that. So, I would say that that castle will most likely look much better and still perform good if we can work on it and convert it to nanites. That is, a, I guess, a prime example of utilizing nanites in a good way. And nanites wasn't on the map when that was constructed. I think more than one. Teen Room looks better. Oh, we were actually looking on Teen Room 1 from the first game. Uh, what was it? A few weeks ago, and we said, holy shit. You remember it better, but when you jump in, ay, 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 no, no. <laughs> Nothing looks better in more than one anymore. Even though you remember it, oh, it was, was pretty good. It looked pretty good. That was, you know, in your mind, and then you jump in there and think, holy shit, what happened? Have you already, or are you planning to do a sneak peek for any elemental stuff? Yes, next week is the plan. Guys, I think it's uh, time for... Um This little, this little baby, one moment, I'm gonna start that up. And the music is better, it's actually the same music. <laughs> This is this is strange. So the, we have the same music track from Modern One and Modern Two. It's exactly the same. All all the songs from Modern One is in Modern Two. So if you enjoy them better in Modern One, <laughs> something is wrong because it is the same in Modern Two. I mean, minus the the the, the vocal in Teen Room Capital, which gonna be in for the epic release. Yeah, I mean, uh, so when you have a large open world like we have in Milan, quite unique again to the, you know, and being able to see a city from far away obviously means you need to work a lot on performance there because you can't always have everything loaded on that distance. You'll be killed the performance. So that means you need to have ways of disguising and doing lots optimizing on distance, right? At the same time, we want to make sure that you can see Meduli from far away or, or Teen Rem the castle far away. Uh, but of course, it's going to be low res. It's going to be less detail than when you're up close. That's how it works. A little bit of that can slowly be changed with nanites, though.
Do you plan to add more PvE spots? Yes, greatly. With the Epic Game Patch, you will see new points of interest, and uh, we have a wave of wildlife and uh, threats spread out on Milan. Because again, we know obviously with more and more players, we need more and more options, right? So we need more actions wherever we go in the world, pretty much. Do you think M2 would be more successful if it had a more cartoon art style? No, absolutely not. I don't think it's the style, uh, you know, that that affect our game or, uh, you know, it's it's quite hardcore compared to most other games, right? And uh, we picked a style that actually, I'm not sure, but so far when we talked about it, I hear most response from people that prefer prefer the realistic style we have, the more dark, gritty, realistic, and beautiful than a cartoony style I, i'm never really fond of the cartoon style uh, i don't i don't know it's for me personally i prefer the more gritty realistic and i think we've done an awesome job in having a very beautiful game and i don't think that i think that works with us rather than against us uh, uh, you know i could be wrong i don't know if majority prefer a cartoon mortal style um i don't think so though because we do get a lot of great feedback that it looks amazing and they love the realism we would be more optimized and therefore draw more people in so I think it would uh, I'm not sure about that like, like, like we talked about many times before we actually have better performance than most other MMOs when it comes to amount of characters on the screen. And we have shown that in our last big battles. Our performance is not bad. Uh, we have areas that are bad that we absolutely will uh, optimize and improve. But I would say out in the wild and gathering 200 people on the screen with that amount of details and how amazing that can look compared to, I don't know, any other MMO that, that you know, have, have 200 people players on the screen the fps is dying i haven't played a mmo with more players on the screen with this performance we have and i tried a lot of mmos over the years so i wouldn't say that i mean sure you can play wow on low settings and play on a dead level zone where there's no players around you and you can play that on a very old computer and have decent fps but going into, into a crowded zone and your computer is crashing um, we have a little bit higher start demand because we have a newer game, newer tech, it looks better. But as soon as you have a decent computer, it still looks amazing and runs quite well. We are working on a CPU bottleneck that should help greatly. But I wouldn't say that, you know, it won't just magically run better because we changed the style to be cartoonish. Um, you know... I mean, sure, we could strip half of the polygons and make it cartoonish to fit with that low poly count. But the polys are becoming less and less important as a main performance factor. So it wouldn't help much. It comes down more to um, having clever systems coded to handle a lot of players and a lot of complexity without killing the performance. And that's where we spend our resources while World of Warcraft doesn't, because they don't focus on that. They know that you play around, you play through these zones and levels when you are by around these levels, and then you leave and go to the next one, next one, next one. We don't. You can go to the same location whenever you want, even if you're new or a veteran, and everyone can decide to go there. So we always work on having it, you know, optimized for large masses, which many other games doesn't have as the main feature. Cartoony style belongs in cartoony theme parks, not a full loot PvP landscape, in my opinion. I mean, I get it's also a personal taste, right? But I, most that I hear from people, new and old, is that holy shit, it looks really good, they like the style, they like the realism and grittiness, and it's been a positive thing, mostly.
but, but like I said, we are working on heavy optimization, so when we step over to Unreal 5, you should be able to uh, gain a overall better performance and stability on uh, any computer, obviously. Uh, there is no way to completely stop your game keys from being sold on CDK sites. Do you have any plan to combat ban users purchasing keys for four dollars and re-entering your game? To uh, I mean, you can't buy the game for four dollars today. Uh, we have local price on Steam, but it's not that low. We increased the, that minimum a little bit. Because some of that, yeah, there are people that are trying shady things, breaking the rules, get banned, and then they buy a new one for cheapest. And we also work with Steam on this. They say that they work against and preventing this. Obviously, uh, we don't know their progression and proceed of all that, but they say they do. Um, and obviously, we are expanding our tools to try to identify and handle that in an efficient way. Uh, Obviously, it's sad if we are forced to increase those regions to higher price. We have done it a little bit already um, to stop some of this. But of course, it's, it, it does affect those that are living there and do it in a correct way. And they may think the game became too expensive. But obviously, we need to measure what's best for the game. If there's not a huge market in those areas, then maybe we have to just in simply increase it to prevent some of that abuse that are happening. So yeah, it wastes a lot of development resources for sure, because we need to investigate a lot, ban and wipe and repeat. So it's it's a process. Dark fantasy for the win. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I have a Gucci computer, but while I'm riding my horse, there's regular freeze. This gives my vibe. Exactly. So we work on exactly this. <clears throat> there, there's uh, the whole world. As you know, we have no loading time or instances, which means we need to build the world in a very creative, efficient way. Loading and deloading these levels are not effective currently. And it, it results in a CPU stall, which means, yes, your frames go down to zero pretty much and it can be everything from one second to a few seconds depending on your cpu power and that is indeed a bad overall experience when you're running around in the world especially when you're in a fight and that happens that's very annoying we have a uh, full coverage of all this and we have started the mighty work in uh, fixing and optimizing this so not only should this be greatly reduced or almost removed in many areas but also overall fps should also be improved um, in, in, the, in the game of Milan and the cities. Last big fight I had 12 FPS as a mage, I might as well not play if it's 12. Yeah, obviously 12 FPS is not optimal in a big fight, right? Because traces is important. Every strike, swing, aim with such low FPS is not optimal, right? Uh, it goes for everyone. So obviously we want to have a, a better minimum than that. And that's what we're working on. So like I said, we're working on the whole world, all the biomes to optimize them, make the level streaming more, more fluid. And we're also working on a very huge task, which is going to make um, the characters even more optimized so they have a smaller impact in large scale as well. So we're working on all this. Um, we... We don't have an exact time frame, frame on the character optimization step, but the background cost, the environments, areas, cities, uh, is something we're already working on and should have a, a pretty good face on for the Epic Games release also. Low hanging fruit, just there. Guild tabers and flag banners, a simplified system, 15 basic colors, uh, plus some emblems yeah we may have to add a few temporary banners for this before we can give you the real um, guild die system 
for sure. Hey man, it's your rig. I have zero issues with performance, even in a four hundred man fight. I was twenty plus FPS with all sets and max the entire time. That that that. Then you have a good computer for sure. Holy shit, man! My last four hundred man fight, I only had nineteen FPS. I think the majority were suffering around nineteen FPS. That that they obviously didn't have the super computer. Like I said, we're gonna improve that, so you should be able to see quite a few more FPS hopefully over time. So did you ever play Terra online? It had troubles with 30 people in the battleground and you were seeing gray static characters running around. Yeah, like I said, <laughs> we have to be realistic and, you know, sure, we can, we, there's room for improvement and we need to optimize. But the, I think the truth is that we have a very good base performance with extremely impressive results in large scale battles. The network handles it now, the frames get a hit, but it's still extremely impressive i mean imagine 400 players that's insane i've never been in a 400 battle in any mmo in my entire life and i play them all uh when there were 100 people battles th those were the big ones i've been the fps was five you know it was cool because it was rare and unique but it wasn't really enjoyable in the long term because how choppy it was and i had a good computer back then also so again we are not in a bad state. Uh, I think we have a very impressive numbers in a, you know in this high visual scenery and character and traces and body parts that is already ten times more complex than any other MMO. So I, I do want to give the team again. Uh, 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 um, uh, what am I looking for? Like uh, you know, the team had done a fantastic. Uh, system achieving those impressive numbers is is not an easy task and not even the giants have managed to do it today so um like i said there is room for improvement and that will happen frame magic what the hell is frame magic <clears throat> I'm late. Did I miss anything juicy? Uh, I'm showcasing the Scorpion Blaze. Are we talking about all kind of random things? Um, elementalism, sneak peek, plan for next stream, and we're in the middle of a giveaway that I'm gonna pull, pull in a moment. I have a key. You can sign up and be lucky, and we will see. Uh, all right, I think it's time for the giveaway. Actually, when is Motline Three coming? I don't think it's necessary because Motline Two gonna run forever. As long as you support the game, and as long as I live, Motline Two gonna keep on expanding into infinity you're gonna put the game on the map starting with TZ, Epic Games and then BOOM! take over the world um, the ballista control from WSD or mouse, move mouse movements and uh, you will be able to command Using the manpower to use it forward, etc., with WSD. Great to hear that, Kimco20. And welcome to Mortal Online. I 
with 1200 concurrent players let's go do you mean mortal uh, we have quite quite a lot more than that gonna add a couple of hundred getting close to 2000 actually so slowly but steady growing that is awesome didn't expect to grow uh, that much until we actually hit our upcoming patches but uh, it's nice to see obviously uh, healthy steady growth every week so far that is awesome and also a very good opportunity for us to again measure all the data on the servers to follow every every step of that as i mentioned we have a very big optimization on the server in this next sprint 4 patch so um yeah what will happen to all houses when tc will come out nothing they remain the, the houses are like the key component for starting tc so that's that's just as it is <clears throat> uh we're going to release mo2 with epic games will it be free to play no not initially we are looking to make haven free to play sometime after the epic game release i can't say exactly when that will happen but the, the plan is to do some do that sometime after oh my god we got another one gently cucumber Thank you for the subscription. Appreciate it. Alright, uh, I'm gonna jump down and I think it's about time to do the giveaway. So do you like the the mechanics by the Scorpion Ballista so far? Does it look juicy? Do you wanna sit there and uh, shoot dragons or camperons? <laughs> or, or try to one-shot someone in the head? Yes, you'll be able to place these on wall sections and house sections that have space for it. There will be a mobile version and of course you can also construct it on the ground wherever you want. Just make sure the enemies doesn't capture it and use it against you. Got 15 pairs in the act fight with a 1070 and 7 year old computer. Uh, CPU, so to be honest, it's all good and should only get better. Yeah, I mean, 1070 and a seven year old CPU in a next game like this that looks like this and have the accuracy in terms of body parts, traces, and 400 players around you doing crazy stuff. It's actually unreal. You know, it, <laughs> like I said, compared to any other game, and they're not really that close, so. It's a good baseline and it will indeed get better. 15 FPS is obviously quite rough to uh, smoothly rely on, right? But, uh, you know, it's it's still working at least. But yeah, we will uh, cramp in a few more FPS for sure. During the act shenanigans over the weekend, I was <laughs> having stable FPS about the... Uh, Everything set to low on an i7 processor from 2017 and a 2070 Super. Yeah, yeah. Like I, like I said, it's, uh, you know, it's not bad. It's not bad. And it will get better. We will break the world record even further. We're going to push 800. Let's do it soon, guys. 800. When we're done with the final step, we should be able to hit 800. That, that will be insane <laughs> it would be silly right but i think it's doable it's going to be unlimited how many uh, these you can put down as to avoid 100 players on 100 of these so obviously they come at the cost you can't just get um wood and construct them you need to get the deeds they're going to be expensive and they're going to be a new currency so you can't just use gold either uh, so they will, be, they will be limited. You have to carefully construct them and carefully use them. They are not to be wasted. That's for, that's you know the goal behind the balance also. Uh, well, classic had four man ballots during phase two. I wasn't in any of those ballots, so obviously I can't speak for WoW 
battles in 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 that case. But I did play WoW in the release, and when I went to what the hell was that city? It was extremely crowded. I counted 150 people, and my FPS was pure crap on a top-end computer. Um, so you know, I only draw the conclusion that obviously that is not their main focus because it wasn't that impressive, even though, you know, low poly, nothing really standing out visually wise because of the scalability. I, I, I was following Darfall from start to end. I never saw a foreigner battle. I tried to look into it. Um, you know, it was a game that was a little bit similar to Mortal Line back in the days. But I, yeah, they went another route in some corals and style that, you know, wasn't my cup of tea, even though I was quite interested initially. Uh, but yeah, never close to 400, to my knowledge. Again, I could be wrong, of course, but I, uh, I follow that quite closely. I tried it. Uh, but uh, performance wasn't as good as Immortal, that's for sure. Spam those missile, magic missiles all over the place. Everyone was the same, pretty much. <laughs> I didn't I didn't like that part. About Guild Wars too. I mean that that is not really a MMORPG, a Guild Wars. You know, it's you know town MMO, and then it's instanced individual. Like World of Warcraft, but without the m more massive scale, I would say. What is he laying about today's chat? I'm never lying, you son of a bitch. Dig do zix. You can step out immediately. <laughs> what a rude person. Uh... Mouse movement on aiming on the uh, scope and blister. No, it didn't crash around 200. So WoW crashed on 200 people. I mean, like I said, I, I, I don't also think they didn't design it for those kind of battles, right? So I guess it wasn't their top priority. But it is for us. Right, giveaway. I keep forgetting it, guys. Sorry. So, last few seconds, if you just tune in, exponential mark MO2, and you enter the giveaway, I'm going to roll it in just a moment. <clears throat> so, plan is next week a uh, sneak peek of elementalism. And I can't say, I also plan to do a sneak peek and go through a little bit of the TCC gym mechanics and show some of that eventually also. Uh, again, we don't have any dates, any official dates externally on when we go live with these upcoming patches. Uh, Alright. Where's alchemy effect? You will see, you will see. We don't we don't really spoil too much there. Uh, there will be new regions and uh, ingredients to play around, obviously. Um, it's, it's up for the alchemists. We will obviously mention that it goes in and is, is there. Uh, all right, it's time for the giveaway. <clears throat> uh, 
Little pinch rip. Any plans for drops to promote M2 streamers? Thanks for the hard work, Star Wars team. Yes, absolutely. So along with uh, getting close to Epic Game release, we plan to, as I mentioned before, start any marketing, ramp up, uh, promote our streamers, support them back, make awareness in every single way we can, and start growing faster. So for sure, we will uh, update our program and explain how that will work when we are getting closer. Please tell me this isn't the only siege weapon getting at re on release. No. We have the catapult as, as well. We have fire arrows, uh, oil um, traps or whatever they're called. Uh, and uh, we're looking at some variation of these mobiles, stationaries. There would be a good pack that is effective against players, pets, siege machines obviously and structures there will be all the different efficiency tiers you have a contingency plan if you suddenly pass away i don't currently <laughs> i don't currently um but eventually i will put a plan in motion so i can uh, start relax and uh, stop stressing Uh, all right. And it can confirm this is you. I mean, it did look like me when I'm squinting my eyes <laughs> with the beard. <laughs> uh, new currency, indeed. I did play Dark Age of Camelot. And I was participating in quite large battles, but never close to 400. And my FPS tanked way hard when I was around again, a little bit over 100. I mean, you need to consider 100 people on the screen is a large amount and it looks like a lot. We, I calculated exactly players around uh, Bruce when he was in the act battle. And, and we got a little bit more than 400. So that was absolutely one of the largest battles we had. And network was fine, and you know, no, the FPS, you know, different depending on the hardware. But I never got to those stats in any of those older MMO that I also played quite a bit. Uh, it was in large battles and it was epic and exciting, uh, but far from those numbers and the performance currently. So we, I think we have to give credit where it's due to what the team managed to do. That is. Quite impressive, and it will only get better. Um, no, players will not just walk and destroy uh, structures. Uh, you know, the balance is obviously very important around that. There should be meaningful commitment to that huge commitment. And like I said, there, there's new currencies. You can't just get siege machines and destroy things for the fun of it. You need to commit, you need to earn the currency, you need to have the the right resources and you will spend those where you, it really matters. If these are your enemies or you want to claim this ground, ground, that's where you should commit. Do you still tank frames in, in WoW now with 100 people on screen? I mean, I haven't followed the latest Mortal uh, World of Warcraft, so obviously I can't really say what I think there, but yeah. Like, there's online siege or slideshow at 80 players. Yeah, and that's that's the common numbers, right? G getting close to 100 is quite impressive and it's large. It is a lot of people, and that's also usually when you get a big hit on your clients or even server. But that's where our one of our main focus has been. We want to optimize the crap out of that and build clever system to be able to surpass that greatly and still have decent performance. And I think we are on that path. Dark, Dark Fall Online was a joke. I tried it and it was com comically bad to me. Spin jump, bunny hopping. It was very much like that. I agree on that part. I didn't really enjoy it either because some of that.
300 players can fight in one map. Yeah, but but how huge is that map then? So they spread out. It's not 300 players on the screen, right? And it's also a top-down view, so it's very different, right? You can only see what you see in that case. I guess you can rotate the camera, but yeah, Guild Wars are not really, again, focused being a large-scale MMO, but yeah, map focus, 300 players on a huge map, yeah, I mean, makes sense. But it's also cartoonish. But of course, another style. Uh... No, this machine won't break in walls. Uh, it's going to be more efficient against soft targets and other siege machines. Catapults are the wall breakers, I would say. Heavy ass, stone bowlers, fire, stuff like that. Uh, one moment, guys. I will be right back in a minute. And when I come back, I'm going to pull the giveaway instantly. So sorry for delay. One moment.
Alright. Sorry about that. Let's do this then. Um... <clears throat> All right. Uh... <clears throat> Let's give away time. If you just tune in, we have five seconds, and here we go. Uh... I will hide that one and we will do real is it there. <sighs> All right. Good luck everyone. What's the FPS with the max of thirty ninety players? The CPU is the bottleneck, so that is the first bottleneck, uh, pretty much before your graphic card, in most cases. All right, good luck, everyone. Let's go. It's time. Here we go. And the winner, congratulations, League of Toby. You are the winner, League of Toby. All right, let's see. Uh, rigged <laughs> League of Toby, are you here? That is the question. Let's see. League of Toby, are you here? <sighs> Let's give him a moment, guys. <clears throat> Said he pass it to me. <laughs> Don't think so, eh? Let's give you a moment so we don't do uh, the same mistake as last time. Rush to another one and then both came back and I promised out two keys. We may have left, that's true. Is he not in the chat, guys? Is that it? He is in the chat. When I am looking. Let's give him one more minute. And then it's a re-roll. It is what it is. 
League of Toby One, but he may be a he just responding, guys. Yeah, sorry, no worries, no worries. It was just in time to get it actually. So we have our winner, League of Toby. Let me um, grab that key. Congratulations, League of Toby. Are you new or veteran? He's here. Yes. I got him. Got him covered. Revoke your lurking. He's new, looks of it. Pretty new. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Alright, alright. Welcome to Mortal Online. Ah, uh, about a month new. So you're still learning the the game pretty much. Awesome to hear. Sure, you're welcome. Have you joined a guild yet? I'm uh, always interested of new players. A one giveaway. League of Toby won it. Fresh meat. <laughs> I can't say when and how we handle Mortal 1 at this point. Everyone is 100% focused on Mortal 2. We need to stick to that plan for now until we can decide how we handle Mortal 1. Obviously, we the forums have been down also. I know this in Mortal 1 is a little bit unfortunate. Uh, again, they update their freaking website plugins and stuff that makes us always have to update these. And obviously, Mortal 1 not being the number one priority anymore it takes a little hit obviously so uh, we need to cover that whenever we have time uh, he's still even fighting in haven fighting zombies that's that's not too bad it's always good to take your time in haven you know play around with the clades get a feel for what you want to play right we all been there. Boom! Keyboard scrums with the 147 bits. You're killing it, my main. Sheer force one one players to embrace the future. I mean, there's obviously not a very large active player base in Molten One. Uh, most of the players have went over to Mod Line 2, obviously. Mod Line 2 is surpassing in every single way now. It's just lacking, obviously, the Saruka continent and a few small features. Um, so, yeah, not too many active there. Most of them you know, moved over to Mod Line 2. Yeah, so after Elementalism, we may do a little session over the other magic schools to fine-tune those. And the race walker control seems to be an unnecessary step. There was a thought and idea behind it, but we may as well just remove it. Because, yeah, it's the common feedback we get on it. The spin will change when we get more tactics and options that are more effective than just spin right we will uh, implement those pair blockers pair blockers pair pair breakers i mean and special moves for every single weapon type group um, that you can use more tactically <clears throat> Uh, will the lag spike when crossing no lines? Certain areas be fixed with Unreal 5. Uh, no lines have nothing to do with Unreal Engine. That is the network, but that is also not what you're experiencing. The spike and CPU starter, that is everything from a half second to even a few seconds, depending on your CPU load, is level streaming issues. And yes, we are improving and uh, we'll solve that for when we transition to the Unreal 5 patch. That is the plan. There may be still be obviously stuttering when you load huge areas, 
but uh, we are working on minimizing that and optimizing it in, in general also. I am not sure if you already answered this, but will Elementalism in Mortal, 1, Mortal Online 2 contain the same spells as in Mortal 1? Or will there be differences? There will be quite heavy differences. First of all, we are looking at in a total of 70 spells for Elementalism. That is outrageous. Uh, there are natural groups in Elementalism. Uh, there is one group, as it stands now, if I'm not mistaken, that is not in the initial Elementalism patch because it just grown out of proportions and we went all in for the old game design and want to deliver something exciting. Um, so yes, holy moly, that is indeed a lot of spells. So, um, and the last group is quite specific and very completely new based on the first game. That's why we decided to put that um, as a separate patch because it's going to be too much. And uh, yeah, we want to keep it controlled. So, but yeah, you would you would obviously recognize quite a few of the spells, um, but they will be more refined and defined in different categories and groups that make sense. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a huge school, and um, everyone will be able to tap into the basics of it very easily. I think even one possible element would be available in Haven. To give all those new players, especially also thinking uh, ahead when it comes to the, the free-to-play experience, we want to give them a taste of uh, the magic that most new players are assuming or asking for, you know, Praetal-based stuff. So, possible one element there, so you can get a little taste for it when you're new also. But also, obviously, uh, very much soloable content to work towards uh, the different elements and all, all of that. But obviously, some of them will be a little bit more... Uh, tricky, but still soloable in most cases, I would say. Um, so yeah, it's a, so it's the lost spread knowledge of elementalism that you simply have to gather back to master it. The other school are meant to stay small, but there will be some adjustment on them. A, a few cases for, uh, I think, almost all of the schools. Uh, some spell changes. Uh, we may be adding some spell mechanic. Uh, we're also adding the server side mechanic where you don't need a target for Viasma and those spells that you can throw without targets in Necromancy. Um, yeah, a little, a little bit stuff like that. When can we make cosmetic clothing? We have uh, three sets of clothing that is also coming with Epic Games release. So you will have you know, clothing. And uh, NPC citizens will also be able to obviously use this clothing. Uh, keyboard crumbs with the more bits. Can you specifically answer if the meteor type spell from Mortal 1 will be present in the new elementalism? I can tell you. Yes. But it will be refined and a little bit different. But there will be some quite crazy big airway spells that also have an impact on siege st structures, but also a little bit on the structure side. Uh, there are some heavier requirements on some of these spells, such as you need to control the weather in a certain way, you, you need to meet the requirements in the weather before you can cast these more powerful spells. They may obviously take longer to cast, more expensive to cast, you know, the whole balance shenanigans. Uh, but yeah, there will be some Quite a few more of those, I would say. What do you think about putting skins in the game? It's a good source of income for the company. Eesh, yeah. We had that discussion before as well. We have so much professions and rewards and gameplay around that kind of reward and achievement that it would be quite sad to just sell out on it instead. Everyone buys it, everyone have it. So it's quite deep incorporated in the actual game reward and experience and uniqueness that we want to promote more. And it's actually for you, the players, that benefit more greatly experience-wise, enjoy-wise, compared to just buying it. You know, we see that, yeah, there are many successful microtransaction rewards, game skins that works. But I will hope 
that people see that we give a hundred percent gaming experience no crap no locked content no no penalty gameplay experience wise you get a hundred percent gameplay experience fair game same for everyone and all you need is an active subscription i really hope that most people will see and understand the value in going that route instead of selling a bunch of skins and we need to add more and more every month and eventually we have rainbow unicorns left and right skins it's it, it comes at a cost for the game experience i think and i would love to be able to avoid that and give a hardcore awesome pure gaming experience before locked content pay to win skins and all of that so hopefully you know when your server cap will be more than 2k players it's already uh we don't have a cap in 2k anymore like i said we are growing every week we have no cap no queue as long as you know since we sebastian tune those numbers we don't know the current uh cap when the server will add queue because we haven't gone close to it yet and like i said we actually have a huge optimization on this total capacity step on the network in this next patch as well so this one is also very important to have in place before tc um but yeah we we are beyond 2k already and we have more players than steam chart says online also at any given time so things are looking exciting we are growing slowly um a little little um stress that we haven't uh, been able to put the current optimization in yet because we're already growing quite rapidly but i think we should be fine we can um, should be fine until we get the sprint four in i want a flying rainbow unicorn hell yes ah, i don't know if this is the game you know <laughs> I would have to put that coder to uh, put the numbers on the website. Sure, we can do that. That that is not you know a very complicated thing. But again, as I said before, there there's hundreds of things we all want, right? But every developer in the team have a very clear schedule set in stone, pre-planned, designed, and following that and checking them off on a daily basis to make sure we are on track, following the structure and pipeline. So that means we can't just add new things on their daily schedule because then we are wrecking the, our entire schedule and have to you know, delay our plans. So there's a lot of small things we would like to add, but we can't just simply add them. We are only so many developers and they have to follow the current schedule we have. We can't just add to that list. So, but yeah, you know, eventually we can do stuff like that for sure. Uh, yeah, sometime in the upcoming sprint, we need to plan dedicated time to implement the staff rods, etc. in the crafting system. That is the last step left. So we have the content for it, but the code side where, where you can craft the rods haven't been finalized fully yet. Uh, the outline is there, but there are some specific components we need to build that we will obviously revisit when it's time. Why not making skins? Uh, like I said just a moment, you know, I go lyrics. We don't want to bloat the game with stuff that microtransaction games is and move on on that road. We hope that people will enjoy what you can actually do <coughs> in terms of becoming a barber or a tailor that can discover new recipes, becoming that as a profession, making money on it and discovering a unique stuff. And sell them and trade them and there's a high value in it uh, because if we go the route with mitre transaction we need to add new skins every now and then and eventually we're gonna have a shit show right and it's not that type of game we want to delude with crap that doesn't make sense we want it to be respecting the design the immersive level and the rewards and uh, your reward when discovering things rather than stealing from you and sell them to people instead so 
and and all that needs is a subscription so hopefully people will see the value in that i actually saw that even line have increased their subscription they're 90.99 a month that's that's crazy they said that they have to increase their subscription fees to cover the expenses um hmm, so we're quite cheap compared to even line i would say in mortal real 2 <laughs> we don't have mortal real 2 and we don't plan to because you will be able to do that kind of experience in mortal line 2 eventually so there's no need for a standalone client for that Yeah, Kitten was a cute little project for us to get into Unreal Engine 4 <coughs> and also get some knowledge how to make a game on consoles and it was quite successful. Without any marketing, obviously it will never explode and since it's also VR only game for PC and, and PlayStation, it has some smaller market obviously, right? But uh, rate was off the charts in terms of... Uh, what people thought about it it got you know pretty much full full pots people enjoyed it cute little game and it worked greatly and uh, we got a lot of experience in unreal engine 4 and obviously being able to port games to consoles so yeah good little project for that <clears throat> how much will the subscription be when implemented so the one month based is planned to be 14.25 14 and 25 cents uh, and then discounts making it cheaper and cheaper for three months six months and even possibly a one-year commitment uh, so obviously if you know you want to play this for a long time you can save money by committing to longer subscription options so yeah 1425 compared to 9099 that evil line does uh, well quite surprising that they increased it that much i wasn't aware uh, we don't have any plans to increase it at this point obviously because hopefully that will be enough for us to continue growing expanding and continue development and improving the game lifelong subscription option maybe something like that we will see we will see if that's uh, also a possible option There'll be geocrafting so we can disassemble those trash trinkets to get some mats and gems. Yeah, the plan is to eventually add that profession also, geocrafting. I can't say when. <coughs> How can you be sub to Eve without paying for it? Eve has a bit more game to be honest. I'm not sure though, if you start counting what you can do in that game, it's quite thin. You know, you can do grind missions, you can rat, you can mine, and you can build things and trade things. What more can you do? You know, other than running a corporation. I was always I was, I was surprised. I was playing that since launch. I really like that game. I think it's a solid game. Player driven economy and all that, a lot of shared stuff with Mortal Online. But very quickly, I kind of felt I was missing more features and more expansion. It was like it never really expanded into new features. It was like it was set like that, and then it did other things. Um, <coughs> obviously, I'm missing the whole walking around on the ships, control manually, not out of control, landing on. on planners doing things and more sandbox i was always wondering how can they over all these years not being way past star citizen for instance it's like they're working on something else completely for many years i, I don't know explanation but just comparing to model 9 we were surpassing them in warp speed in amount of features in contents very quickly and obviously they are much larger than us <coughs> and even today uh, there's not that much variation I can do in Evil Line compared to in Mortal Line, I would say. So I don't know. 
a solid game for sure, but I was always a little disappointed. Why are they not expanding more features and more options? Kind of got, became a thin sandbox, uh, I think. It has a lot of good depth. Obviously, <clears throat> enjoy fitting the ships and so on, but it's also... You know, if you fit the ship wrong, it went out all over. I mean, you know, warp scrambles and all that. One little mistake and it's all over. You couldn't even try to flee. You couldn't use any player skills to try to flee. That was one other thing that I was always a little bit disappointed in. If I didn't plan this, had a rig and played it that way, there was no option to, to try to counter it or avoid it by using player skills. Do you know what I mean? It's very much set up like if we don't have this fitting and do this and that there's no other options i like the freedom of you can at least always try to run immortal line right you can always try to hide and there's no hard mechanic that locks you and it's you know a done deal in the same way some of those things that i was the only thing that i guess i was missing a little bit in evil line <clears throat> Yeah, fit, fitting obviously was one of the big depth, but at the same time I kind of struggle with the balance there. Um, yeah, a good game still. I'm, I'm not, you know, there are always some pros and cons with all MMOs, I would say. <coughs> it's not about walking on a ship. No, I meant more that obviously even line have fierce competition, right? Because <clears throat> a lot of the players <laughs> was dreaming of when can we walk on the ships? When can we have our characters? It was a big demand growing because, you know, evolution. <clears throat> and they never really got to that step. And then, bam, Star Citizen came, shocked the world and uh, taking everyone. Um, even I could have pushed the frontier and still be, you know, wiping Star Citizen, I think. But now, I don't know. And then they sold it. The player economy obviously is one of the big things, right? I like that always, that everything is player made, the, the market is player driven. And that's one of the things obviously that we were inspired by and why we also wanted that immortal line. <coughs> of course, there are player skills in the new line. I'm not saying that, Hodo. I'm just saying that depending on. It's not that you can just go out like in Mort Online. Give me a freaking starter sword and I will whoop your ass because I have skills and even if you have all the fitting in the world, I will still beat you. That's not possible in the Evil Line. You need to have that certain skills requirements, fitting to counter some things. If you don't, you're fucked. There, there's no way. You can't use player skills out of that situation, which you can in Mort Online. You can use your player skills to beat another group, you know, that is one of the things that I was missing a little bit in Evil Line. Again, I'm not saying I didn't enjoy it. I did enjoy Evil Line a lot for many, many years. I played it a, a shitload with a lot of friends. And I every now and then miss it a little bit, you know. But there was a few things that we all were, were missing and kind of thought they would add eventually. But it never did. And now Star Citizen is covering some of that. That is looking exciting. But then again... It's not the uh, uh, MMO, and uh, I don't know. It looks like they are making us safe for business by just keep selling starships, right? <laughs> and stick with that because it's a good business model. <coughs> <coughs> I, I I don't think my point is getting through, Lohodo. I'm not saying that there's no player skills, and that yeah, with a with a proper skill and uh, rig, you can be successful killing a lot of other players that that that's not what i'm saying uh it's, it's such a hard counter like on and off counter i would say a less dynamic room for player skills around that. I don't know if that makes sense more what I'm trying to explain here. Which you naturally have more in a game like Mortal Online. I mean, their game is designed behind that counterplay fit rigging system, obviously. 
so I understand that obviously they can't just change that core essence. No, obviously I don't just mean that you, you get your your starter ship and think I would be able to whoop people in the same way because it doesn't really make sense in a game like that. But what I mean is, I I if I have a decent fitting on a battleship, um, and I there's one mistake or wrong fitting, someone is warp scrambling me. I don't have the counter. What the hell? I don't remember the. Um, fitting name that is the counter for that um, and I may have wrong drones or whatever for those that ship's size uh, I can just look at the screen and uh, sip some coffee while I'm dying because there's nothing I can do to get out of that situation and uh, that's been a huge complaint for a lot, from a lot of people since day one that um, it's more strict. I don't. I don't know how. How I freaking explain what I'm trying to go for here. But it's quite a common theme that a lot of people have been a lot of a lot of view and inputs on. <clears throat> it's kind of like being caught by a mountain mage. No, I mean you can you can mountain mage need a line of sight right if you break that it can't do anything to you now we do lack a few important factors such as proper dismount, dismount mechanic that also keeps them off the mount you know that is a big important thing that we will add to the game very soon um, so obviously there will be more risk for the mountain mage if he, if he messes up or fall off it's going to be a much greater penalty and like I said sprint 4 also get counters for any mages against any mages. So there will there will be those options and tactical moments, I would say. <clears throat> no, you can get away from Albarine. It's time usage. I mean you see back and forth by all players today with the different plates. It's not that Albarine is the one that always chase everyone and can always get away. There's so many more components to that, you know. <clears throat> the ele elementalism bowlers knock people off mounts. Uh, there will be several types of dismount options, yes, and more over time is that just simply makes sense. Uh, the tricky part with the dismount animation is that you have different directions, motions, and they can be knocked off from different angles and directions. And for that to look good and feel somewhat good, you know, it, it takes some time. It's quite quite a tricky system. It's not just the animation itself. Um, it's quite a task. We have gone through it, and yeah, it's quite time-consuming. So we decided that we're gonna add that. Obviously, when you get dismounted, <clears throat> you will fall off instantly, and the horse will flee from you. So you can't just instantly remount. So you have to, you know, adapt to that situation. That is a quite quick thing we can do. So we actually at least have the. Uh, you know, the penalty and risk reward against any mounted player. Yes, there will be more armor sets and clothing. What's up, Shrubby? It was surprised how many people don't stamina management well, and that is quite a key component to master in Mortal Line. And a lot of people don't know how to do that efficiently; they just run around without adapting to that mechanic or mastering it, pretty much.
when you add a timer to remount so <clears throat> we, we discussed that also obviously if you dismount and you're standing there you can walk around and fight and everything the horse is in front of you and there's a dismount timing saying you can't mount it you can't mount it now you can it's one of those strange ugly design right the perfect way is obviously you fall down on your butt you get a head shocked and you have to stand up again and now you can remount or you get knocked off the horse get a hit get scared it flees run away makes sense just like in movies in real life in some cases and you have to kind of you know find a mount and go go catch it and mount again those make more sense right than um timer on your on your character Um. <clears throat> <coughs> yeah, tower shield will get get a few adjustment as well. Some balance touches. All right, guys, I'm hitting that four hour mark and I'm uh, getting a little, uh, a little sleepy. Um, I guess this will be it for me today. But uh, like I said, hopefully I have a, a little bit more exciting elementalism sneak peek when I can play around and test and show you guys at first hand. A little bit what you can expect with the upcoming Sprint 4 patch. Um... Uh, the DC system, we obviously we will need to look into some of the details there. Uh, we can also shrub if 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 you have rep repetitive kicked cases, we can look into the server to see what's going on with your connection, just to try to pinpoint what's going on to see why. Uh, like I said, there's always some room for tweaking and refinements so yeah it's it's not final in any means there there are we may be able to further tweak some of the numbers <clears throat> but all right um let's see let's do our raid guys who's streaming today uh all right let me do the classical vote Uh, uh, what did I do? Um. <clears throat> What the hell am I writing? <laughs> All right, let's do these little uh, votes. Ladies and gentlemen, help me and uh, cause your vote. And we will do a little raid. Raid. <coughs> it's nice to see uh, a bit more streamers also more frequently now. That, that's nice. We are picking up in every single category, guys, together. This is looking awesome for the future. Getting ready for TZ in the big guns. 
The fishing lord has returned indeed. Cast your votes, people. Yeah, it is nice to see more streamers. Helping with the awareness, you know. That's good, that's good. Why can't I vote for too OP for scrubs? Do we have anyone streaming like that? I don't see that. Uh, all right, squarely it is then. Yeah, awesome to see his back. A very nice guy that is a master fisherman. All of those in votes are PVE people. Lyrics, we, t we tried to cycle it and uh, when I've done a lot of cycles, I let the people decide. Sometimes it's PvP focus, sometimes it's chill focus, you know, it's all, it's all. And just like Mortal Line, it has all, it offer all, right? Alright, let's do the raid then. Uh, where the hell is the raid button there? Uh, Squirrely. Alright guys, um, thank you very much for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed the uh, Scorpion Ballista sneak peek. Next week, plans to show a sneak peek of Elementalism, finally. Uh, so I wish you a good week and weekend, and I will see you soon again. Uh, and have a good night. And uh, thank you all for donations, subscriptions, and all of that also. I really appreciate it. And uh, let's raid Squilly. Awesome to see him back doing his fishing business. Alright, have a good one and good night.